God, oh. Yeah, man. Kind of stuck up on us. Oh, man. Talking about cheese? Yeah, we're talking about cheese. Nice. That's <laughs> it. Talking about cheese and how much I love blue cheese. And <laughs> Were you reading our lips in here? No, I just heard Rafe say, right as the mic's turned on, he was like, cheese. different types of cheese. Or well, something. he thought he was taking a picture. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cheese. cheese. No, we're going on the radio, Rafe. Sorry. This is what we do. I thought we did picture day. <laughs> no. I thought picture it was picture day. day. I thought Life no. Touch was up in the building. No, you know what? For picture day, and I don't know if this were the case with you too, Moon, but being one of the smallest people in school, always for the class picture, front row, got to hold the sign. Oh, Cute. neat. Many years. Uh, I was always front row. Never got to hold any signs. Got to hold the sign. I was always behind tall people, and like it was just my little head, like my little face, sticking through like some shoulders and some armpits. No, they would put you in. They didn't put you in the front. No, they put you in height order. Not all the time. And I was always front row. Elementary school. Elementary school pictures are amazing for me. If you see the progression, because I look. So happy. Like, I look like I just came from recess. They made it like, they must have picked the right time of day because I look so happy. And then middle school, I do not. I'm going to get, I'm going to text you guys tonight and see if you can dig out like an elementary school picture and we'll put them all together. All right, as I got to ask my show. mother. Ask the Ma, moms. if you're listening. <laughs> Cheers. Ma! Dig out the second grade Ma! photo. I remember making the back row and that was like a, it was like making varsity. <laughs> the school back picture. row? <laughs> finally there. And I finally hit a growth spurt and they're like, you in the back now. Oh, I was never a back row. Yeah. Uh, we never had hope for that. I never even considered it. Yeah. Oh, great. I never even considered it. I really didn't. It. Uh, hey, yeah. man. Like, why would I want to be back well, there? I was a I'm redhead, so they always pushed us back there anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, more to the, the right. picture, get in the back. More to the right. More to the right. You're out of frame. King Scott was Please. under the bleachers peering through like a... <laughs> Like a little goblin. Bleacher creeper, yeah. No, they tell Scott, keep going, keep going, out of frame. Okay, snap it. Good. Go in the hallway. <laughs> I never even considered the back row. That was never a possibility for this guy. Mm. Sorry. Well, he never lived. Yeah, I guess. Never considered it. Mm. Never needed it. I guess on my tombstone, I'll read, never got to stand in the back row. Never. Uh, oh. Never. Always a front rower. Always a front rower. Got, <laughs> and, but yet again, got to hold the sign. I was a grower, not a rower. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think when I actually did hit a growth spurt. I'm still waiting. Me too. I regret drinking the coffee I drank at six years old. I probably Whoa. would have been at least six foot five. Probably, yeah. My dad was tall. So. Yeah, your mom, how tall is your mom? She's like five four. She's and really you pretty. are what? Five three. Five three. I know you're going to be, you're supposed to be tall because your feet, you're 13, right? I know, my so size 13, 13 uh, feet. Yeah. I know, I should have been at least six foot. <laughs> Yeah, my kids are, you know, my daughter's tiny. My my son is hitting his My son is hitting his stride now. Mm-hmm. Same, yeah, same for my my boy. He's all of a sudden. He'll be taller than me. And he's yeah, he's, and he's obsessed with that for some reason. My 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 boy is. He's like, uh, oh, look at that, Dad. I'm, yeah, I'm my... past your eyebrows now. And you're like, I know, man. <laughs> you're going to be taller than me, dude. And he he always he always wants to compare. How tall were you when, uh, when yeah. you were my age? I'm is like, he weighing not, himself all the time? All, all the time. Like, what is that? What is that? Is he bulking up? Yeah. No, well, no. Yeah, no he's, he's bulking, bulking up. up. He's like, 128. 128? Dang. Your son is 128? No, I don't know what he is. My oh, nephew is good ripped. Good man. He, he's been, he and his parents are on this, like, meal plan, and they work out religiously, and they're, he's a football player, and he's just this... It's crazy. I see him, you know, every couple of months, and he's just bulking out. I'm like, you know who what? Are I don't you? know. Oh, I forgot. Ways. I forgot. He, yeah, he's he's that the fi- he's the 15 year old. My son. Yeah, that that does son's... sound right. One tw- one twenty eight. My son's a year younger, maybe two years younger. Years. I weigh one twenty eight. I'm gonna te- I'm gonna text. I, I would imagine him. He plays yeah. hockey. He's probably built up. Yeah, everybody. He, he hasn't hit that that spurt yet. No. You know, you know, you know the you, you get like a little growth spurt, and you're like, oh look at that, but you're still a string bean, yeah. and then you kind of actually like. You know, get a frame. Now he's like, I got a six pack down. I go, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. So does every skinny here. kid. <laughs> get the, that guy yes. out called here. called you're emaciated. That's sin- yeah, sin- it's what, not a six you? pack. If, yeah. <laughs> I got, those are your ribs. I can also see your elbow bone. <laughs> I went to the doctor yesterday and got weighed, and I didn't take my shoes off. And I, you always take your shoes off when you get weighed. Always. Dude, I, I always know, I didn't do I had my platforms on yesterday. I get I'm new in my pockets. They don't even they don't even let you sometimes. At yeah. the hospital when I go like, in, oh. 
yeah, like I, I got these big old chunky boots, and I'm and and it was like, oh, we're gonna weigh you. It's always like a surprise too. Right. And I'm like, oh no, let me take my boots off. And I'm like, no need. And I was like, yeah, it's I, this I need. Need. it's like four and a half pounds, man. Right. Oh, I always say these jeans are like 20 pounds, so. <laughs> <laughs> when I get weighed in at Victory, I just go birthday suit. They had to, we had to have a talk. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They're like, you can't do that. You're weighing in the lobby in front of people. <laughs> right. I'm like, and well, the then put it somewhere private because I want to go as low as I can go. I'm trying I to get this, this in-body scan where I need it to be. I figured this, if I did this in the window, this would bring people in. Yeah. But no. Yeah. This is, this is not the red light district, sir. I'm keeping it real. <laughs> this is town and country. Everybody, uh, everybody, weather the storm. Oh yeah, well, storms. My cats yesterday, were okay. Losing their mind all night, and you know our power went out. That's about all that happened in my house. It got wild. Yeah, yeah. us too. Not on me yesterday. That yeah, first, that first, the first hail. Wave, yeah. That wave. first wave that came through around six, six o'clock. Right, tree went down. We were out. I'll bring you through the whole. I'll bring you through the whole. Let's hear it. The whole thing, because it was a whole thing yesterday. You were at home or out? No, we were out. Ugh. We were out. Uh, the girl had had cheer practice at seven, so uh, it didn't feel like making dinner last night. And that new Mission Taco opened up in in town and country. Oh, cool. Where is it yeah. at? Town and country. Um, <laughs> you know where the uh, the old Chrysler plant is. <laughs> no. Oh, wow, on, man. dude. You just, me, no. you just went Here's full dad, brother. No, no, that's, that's, that's an old Jeff joke. That's a Jeff joke. From oh, the Whole Foods, <laughs> where is it? <laughs> uh, you know where the Snooks is right there? <laughs> yeah. It's like 141 and, and uh, Clayton. Clayton. Yeah. It's right in front of the Snooks. Oh, okay. It's got a, it's a big, it's a big. <sighs> Dang. I was just It's there. a big place. Love yeah. the street corn. We oh, got yeah. the street corn. Oh, yeah, we love Ooh. street oh, corn off the cob. Street corn was good. Don't have to work hard for it. Street corn was good. You the get a old, Pandora's Lunchbox beer margarita drink? I didn't, I didn't have any beverages. Oh. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not drinking during the week. Plus, we're, we're not beverage people. At uh, If we're eating at home or we're, we're heading back mm. or something, we're, we're the... No, we've got it at home, right? Both of us. Yeah. Like, if yeah. the kid's like, yo, can I get uh, can I get a drink here? Like, no. We can do that at home. Yeah, we, <laughs> we have drinks at home. I'm sure our parents both said that in, in drive through No, I'm not, I'm not doing... I'm not, I'm, I'm not drinking alcohol during the week. It's been my thing. Your thing. A couple weeks ago, you did. I know. Okay. But there's been some. <laughs> your thing, been except some, for when it's. Uh, my new thing. I'm your exception. Setbacks. <laughs> anyway. There have been some setbacks. But as we're sitting there, so we got to dinner and it opened up yesterday. Yesterday was the first day open for the place. So I said to, I said to, the, uh, to the wife, I said, hey, do we chance it? Mm. Like opening day? Yeah, I don't know best if many behavior. People I don't know if many people know about this. Oh, it's I'm just worried about the crowds. Slam. Oh, sl yeah, slam out. Right? I'm like, it's a Monday. The only reason I knew it was open because they sent a press release to us. And you keep doing opening day stuff. Opening I know, day and I got flags, burned. Opening day He's this. a welcome wagon. He wow. really is. Well, I got That's burned so cool. at that high point. Oh, yeah. Over... Um, On Manchester? No. Down in... At the district. Yeah, that was okay. the forehands and the... The, the forehands. And the high point... Uh, Next collab. to the Top Golf. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, I forgot about really that. burnt there. Well, but that was a busy. weekend. It was a nice day. That was my fault. That was on me. This Wait. one, I was like, "Ooh, this is kind of a quiet opening." Hmm. I'm like, "Let's." You went for it. Let's go. I said, "You know what? If it's crowded, we could always go across the street to uh, Katie's." Yeah, Katie's is right there. But we got there, and it was the place is so big, and it wasn't crowded at all. That's great. 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 And the food admission, the only mission I've been to uh, is the one up in St. Charles. Mm. And I've had some good meals up there. It's great food. And it was good. It was good. I, I, we had the, uh, the, uh, the three dips to start. Oh, yes. Three dips. The salsas and the quesos? No, there was a queso, there was a guacamole, and there was a salsa. It was good. Yeah. Mm. Two baskets of chips the family went through. Very good. I like how they put the little cheese and the uh, tomato things on top of the guac. I love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had uh, four tacos. Didn't feel bad about myself. Really? What kind of tacos? Impossible meat. Uh, no. Oh. You didn't go shrooms. I went. Either. No, I went with the uh, chorizo. I went with the. They have a BLT one. Mm -hmm. What's in that? It was, but it was like a deep fried, like pork belly thing. It was good. Bacon lettuce taco. <laughs> it was good, but it was different. It was like uh, like the bacon was deep fried, like battered and deep fried. It was excellent. Interesting. Dang. Uh, and the other, I think, oh, with the hot chicken one. It was great. Belly was full. Got in the car, had to drive to the valley 
to drop the girl off by 7 o'clock. So around 6.15, we left. We left the mission. Up 141 to 40. Mm-hmm. West on 40. And as we were driving into the valley, it was black. Like it was coming in. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, it just a deluge. I mean, just... It was enough where every car on the highway had their blinkers on. It was zero <laughs> visibility. Whoa. Zero. No visibility. And it went like from, I mean, cloudy skies to just psh, downpour. Traffic stopped. Mm-hmm. And then all our alerts start going off on our phones. Tornadoes. The tornado warning alert. And then you hear the sirens outside through the deluge of, of rain. And it's coming down big, fat drops. You hear the sirens. And I'm like, okay, we're good here, guys. Don't worry. Did you see Helen Hunt and Bill Paxton? Dad's got this. Dad's <laughs> got this. Yeah. Was I a little bit kind of in the back of my head? Like, uh, like a little panicked? Mm-hmm. I, panicked is not the word. i nah, concerned. Okay. Uh, there was a bit of concern. You were driving. I was driving. I'm on the highway. The sirens are going off. All our phones are now going off. Tornado warning. Are you it's, looking? Are you looking for I low can't places? I can see to, anything. You looking for low places to ditch the car? Right. Mm-hmm. I was at this point. I was in front of the Top Golf. Oh, okay, so there really there's no, no there's no to place go. to go. You're just in a big. Well, you're open... kind of in the low spot there, so it's go to World an Market. Advantage. You know, go shopping. Go shopping. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's <laughs> get out of my car. Going let's get out of our car. Mall. Run across the highway. Yeah. My safe space is World Market. We couldn't get to World Market. <laughs> uh, <laughs> go that would mean honey abandoning our car on 40 West, running across the eastbound <laughs> lanes. Find me in the rug wall at World Market yeah. when there's tornadoes. I'll okay? be getting fresh peanut butter and rugs. Hell yeah. <laughs> Don't even get me started. Am I, I know I'm, I'm, I got both hands on the wheel. We're going maybe five miles an hour and then we're stopping. We're going five miles an hour and stopping. Cars, I'm in the right lane. There are cars coming That's up good. my shoulder. Right. Like coming up the shoulder, a-holes. Yeah, what a bunch of jerks. Uh, no, no, no. Special people. No, that should just be emergency crews, not people, Maybe they right? are. What if they are? What if they're temporarily they were trying emergency to get off of Bo- They were trying to get off of Boone's Crossing. <laughs> they were trying to bypass the traffic. Yeah. Because it was stopped. Little did I know that about a half mile up the road, the reason everything was stopped is because there was about golf ball size hail. Uh, top golf right, right up the, there. Right up the yeah. road. Well, let them rush into the That's hail. Fun. You couldn't get around anybody. I'm saying the, the, the special people. Did you try honking? What's your wife's vibe during all this? Here's the problem that I had. She's just on her phone playing Candy Crush or whatever. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> really? Hey, right. that candy ain't going to crush, crush itself. Hey, you know how I'm going I'm to help the situation out? I'm going to crush some candy. <laughs> and I turned to her and I go, can you look something up? Can you? <laughs> like what? I don't know. Like, Can you open up the weather app and go to the radar? I don't know. You had it on lockdown, though. You're white knuckling it. You, you know. You can't control, man, what you can't control. Well, I said put on, like, go to the, the, the Fox 2's website and pull up the, the news. It's mm-hmm. Higgins Higgins or Templeton's got to be on. Oh, man. Steve Templeton is my weatherman. Templeton had his shirt off. Yeah, it was completely off his, last night. Oh, God. Steve Templeton had his, had had ripped his shirt off. off. When uh-huh. he rolls his sleeves up, I get hot. Oh, you know me, too. <laughs> and so Tim goes, hey, he's rolling them up. I go, oh, my God. Just take me now. Yeah, go, to Cam, go, go to KMOV's website and pull up. Templeton's on. Tune in to uh, <laughs> Freddie McDonald in in oh, Ont- yeah. Ontario or Newfoundland. The right. greatest weatherman in the world. Uh, Frank and McDonald. Fr- thank you. Yeah, but yeah. Frank and McDonald gives forecasts like the day after. <laughs> Good to know. Okay. That, those are not forecasts. Those are postcasts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Reports. Which are still Five important. <laughs> it's still important. So, I'm, so she's like, what do you want me to do? I'm like, I don't know. Just turns out. She goes, you got to calm down. Good. I go, I am Somebody calm. Somebody needs to say it in this car. She goes, you gotta st- she goes, you gotta stop yelling. She goes, crush this candy while I take control. <laughs> I go, you could do something. She goes, what am I gonna do? And she's right. <laughs> yeah. I overreacted. I know. <laughs> There's nothing to do, man. She's keeping it on lockdown, that calm vibe in that cab. She just like you know, add like it's like it's like it's 65 and sunny. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's 65 and sunny in the passenger seat, and I'm Weather like, happens. oh, my God. That's a testimony to you, though. You had it under control. She could stay calm. That's a good thing. You were good husbanding yesterday. I could have used a co-pilot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I go, she's got, everything's fine. I go, can you hear 
the sirens going off, and I made this comment. Wish I could have taken this one back. Oh, boy. Is this how you're going to react in emergency situations? Oh, no. Wow. Now we got the hypothetical out. <laughs> oh, Great. No. Let's have this conversation in the middle of a storm. Let's bring it back memories. I actually did that on, on the trip a little bit. I, I, no, I said, can I trust you in an emergency situation? <laughs> what? I said, I said something similar. What was, a jerk. I'm driving the RV, and I ended up on the wrong exit. And she goes, you just, it just said go that way. And I go, well, a little navigating would have helped. Oh, right. God. I was, I'm only trying to keep the whole family alive here. You're like, it's not storming enough outside. Let's get a storm going in this car right now. <laughs> I'll try to remain calm for the kids. The girl's like, I'm scared, Dad. I'm like, you're fine. What do you think that seat is for? You Navigating. <laughs> Looking stuff up. You're crushing candy, and I'm saving this family. <laughs> Just Meanwhile, sitting at my house, saving the family. Tim runs out. When Templeton started in on, like, you need to go to your emergency, and the sirens yeah, were going, goes Tim outside. goes out, gets the weather radio out of the garage. Now we're in the basement with the cats. And he's got he's pumping that weather radio. And who has a weather radio in 2024? Oh, we do. Do you? Okay, yeah, we great. have a couple of them. I've, I'm like, this is we are 80 years old down here right now. Yeah, yeah. We got the camping you ones too, with, with like the uh, alarms on it and the, the yeah. lights. You yeah. can't see my situation. Those Chris. are the kind of gifts my dad gives my wife for Christmas. Yes, the like you could hear. Talking about uh, elderly corner over here talking about their weather radios on their side. Ah, uh, dude, I'm not kidding. That, <laughs> you could hear. That's what my dad gave my wife this this year for Christmas. I think. Pretty you rad. could hear the sirens going off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't see anything. I said she goes. You, she goes. There's no tornadoes or anything. I can't see any. Go. You can't see anything. I said this is not the movie Twister. Zero visibility. She's like, where's Dorothy? Where's the thing on Paxton's truck? Mm -hmm. This is not the movie Twister. She said I can't see any tornadoes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when I said I cannot trust you in an emergency situation. What if she got out and just started? Crushing all the hail like candy crush. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, that's what I've been training for. She got out and the hail's like coming towards the car. She's just like, kah, 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 just crushing it in midair, kung fu, matrix style. Yeah, now what? I used to make fun of the boss. He used to play Minesweeper at his desk. I could see what was going on. <laughs> Remember the game Minesweeper? Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. Everyone remembers the I never knew how to play, but it was fun to just. And I said, one day, stuff. Tommy Matter, yep. the Navy's going to call up. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to say, get us. The top mind sweeper. We got all these minds to sweep out of here. Like war Get games. me yeah, war the games, sweeper. It. And they're going to call up Tommy and they're going to be like, we see you've been training mm -hmm. a lot. I'm glad. Well, so so in our crew, we have a professional mind sweeper and candy crusher. And candy crusher. Dang, and I, listen, yes, did we, I overreact? Yes. We've probably got a fruit ninja in, in our group somewhere as well. Love me some fruit ninja. Yeah. That was such a good game. It's my old nickname. She goes, you got to <laughs> stop yelling. So when did you get home? What was well, I, we wound up dropping the girl off at... at uh, so you weren't that concerned? No, it was fine. It, <laughs> by that time, the sirens had gone off. Yeah, like, you, we're, did, you we're get hit off. The, did you get hit by the hail? Uh, no. No. As I said, it was like it was like half mile up the road. Wow, cool. Because I, we had a neighbor that was at the hockey rink, mm -hmm. which is basically an exit past, and there were crazy damaged cars in the parking oh, lot. Bummer. Because of the because of the golf ball uh, size hail. You know it's serious if car dealers are bringing all the cars in. If yeah. all the car dealer lots are empty. Right. Oh yeah. Some of them have been empty because they got no inventory. So we the uh, rest of them. They're hiding them. We uh, drop the girl off. Everything seems to be clear. Drive up to our subdivision and in the middle of the street, blocking our way home. A fallen tree. <gasps> this. Is your chance. A fallen tree. Did the men just come out of every house? Well, so I, I, the boy and I get out of the car. <laughs> Maybe we could move this. And this thing is heavy as hell. We can't. This is this is definitely not a two two person job. <laughs> so my wife takes a picture, sends it to all the uh, all the wives. <laughs> sends it to all the wives in the neighborhood. And it was just it was just an amazing sight to oh, see like like a bunch. <laughs> Ants. <laughs> it's quiet. Mm. Like just quiet in the neighborhood. This is all you hear, just the just the hum and the just, calm after the storm. It's nature. Then the first man emerges <laughs> from his door <laughs> with a chainsaw. Oh! Oh, there's Justin. There's Jason opening up his door. <laughs> He's got a gas can. <laughs> and there's Ryan. With a hatchet. <laughs> wow. Look at them all. And they're all standing.
standing at the door. Revving their chainsaws. Revving their chainsaws. <laughs> <laughs> Doug's got his weed whacker because <laughs> Phil borrowed his chainsaw and never returned it. Phil's got his work gloves on. Let's. Wow. I'm telling you, the men of the neighborhood were like, I imagined it was like the. Um, Do you guys watch The Last of Us? Yeah. Yeah. Like when someone steps on one of the little tendrils that makes all the zombies wake up. I just feel like it was. Everybody just emerged in the street. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> like they smelled it was blood. Wild. It was I wild the way the call went out, and like all the guys like at the doors. <laughs> Did you take the top off your Jeep and put uh, "Like a Rock" by Bob Seger on? <laughs> Turn it up. I should have. You should have. That's like the chainsaw music. It's in the key of chainsaw, dude. I'm telling you, that tree, which was heavy as hell. Was cut into into about fifty pieces, and everybody's stacking it in in the arms of the children and take it inside. We'll burn it later. Oh, fire pits are going to be <laughs> rare and heck yeah. Well, you got to let it Isn't dry. It nice, yeah. <laughs> fire, yeah. In about two weeks, those fire pits are going to be <laughs> on my in my subdivision. Those fire pits are going to be sh- rocking. That's funny, man. That's good. Should we? And somebody said, should we wait for the city of Wildwood to clear this? <laughs> Should we <laughs> get out of here? Get out of here. It's under control. Somebody said, Patrick, get the hell out of here. We are the city of we are, Wildwood. Yeah. We are the community help. They all turned to the one dude. Yeah, you know what they did? <laughs> they all turned to their <laughs> wife and said, see, I knew I'd use this chainsaw someday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Look, because it, scratches. Because it was fresh, boy. <laughs> Those hadn't been used. Well, I'm telling you, somebody <laughs> had their truck and like there were chains, like chains were out, oh my goodness. and they moved the, like the trunk out of the road. Oh man, it was That's that cool it was that hell. feeling of oh, I bought that Husqvarna thing seven it, years ago. It was about, everybody got out there around seven oh five. That thing was cleared out of the out of the road by seven ten. <laughs> it cut, cut into pieces, stacked on the side of the road. Really. The neighborhood came together yesterday. Yeah. Honestly, it was, awesome. it was really happy you were so But you all immediately went into your homes and told your individual wives how dumb all the other guys were. Sold each other out right after trying to take all. I guarantee everyone in the neighborhood went and tried to take credit. Yeah. You should have seen this idiot, Tom. He didn't even know. Uh, Tom came down. He had one of those electric chainsaws from. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> What are you trying to cut butter? And we said, get out of here. This ain't get out of here, Tom. Here. Right. Honey, God, I'm telling you, if I wouldn't have been there, that tree would still be down. He said he didn't even prime the motor. I tell you. What is that, a Ryobi? Get that. Get out of here. Ah, this, is, this is a steel neighborhood. Ah. I love it. Well, I said, I'm a walkie. I ain't putting a license Chad's plate on. Chad's running his extension cord, you know, from his garage. <laughs> out yeah. With his, uh, uh, you know, his electric. <laughs> Humans being uh, from Van Halen is. Oh, you got him. Oh, the. the <clears throat> it's a Milwaukee chainsaw, huh? Why don't you? Why don't you just bring Fisher Price out here? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Why don't you bring Baby's first chainsaw? Surprised out you're not here. wearing your dress, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you're only saying that to your wives. You're not saying it to each other. No, no. no. We don't want to not. kill no. each other. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that chainsaw is pretty light. Of course I like not. that. <laughs> it, it, I'm telling you, if you could have seen all the doors, the doors of the houses open at once, right. and just the men <laughs> standing at the standing at the door. I'm impressed. Just ready to get ready to clear the tree out, like the call. <laughs> like somebody blew like one of those like. Burr, burr. <laughs> like one of those horns? Right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Man, assemble. And they got that they got that that tree out. Mm. Impressed. Yeah. In I was fact, very impressed. I, I walked home and I was like, man, that was that was some good neighboring. Right I there. heard within an hour they had built a little stand and were selling firewood up by the street. Up by 109. Right? Could fund the new uh, subdivision that, pool. That's why. <laughs> hey, nice. <laughs> <laughs> the pool fund. Buy a cord. <laughs> um, do you know the first names of your neighbors? Yeah. Only first names. I don't know their last you names. You don't know their last names? Mm-mm. We've only been there a year. Yeah. You know? Do you know all your neighbors? 
I don't even know what you mean by all your neighbors. What's the, what's the what's the radius? Yeah, well, I mean, you mean the immediate ones? It's an absolutely not. On both sides, five, five oh. houses, oh, five houses. No, I don't front know back. that. Yeah. I don't know that. You know, the weird thing is, it's kind of spotty. So it's like, it's who who's out? Who right. who's who's got a dog? Who's you got know? a dog? Who's got a dog? Who's walking a dog where I can go? Hey, that's a cute dog. Is that a? Is it yours? Is that a uh, one of them, what is it? GS GSP or whatever you know? With everybody's getting those pointer dogs now, mm. and it's like, oh yeah, it is. And you start talking dogs, and then you go, hey, I'm so and so. Hey, right. I'm so and so. That's how you meet them. Yep. Uh, or they have kids. Other than that, if they don't have a dog or a kid, I don't know them. Mm -mm. Oh. I know my direct I, I, one of my side neighbors, and then the guy across the street I know. And then yeah, people oh. with dogs. We went on a walk yesterday and. All the cute dogs were out yesterday. I know all the dogs' names <laughs> in the neighborhood. Right? I mean, that's yeah. not the people. That's not the people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> the people. I'm, I'm fortunate. I know my neighbors all the way around me, and uh, except, I guess, the ones in the back, not so much. But across the street, the guy, he's pretty much adopted me, so I'm, I'm lucky. That's nice. I wish I did. I wish I did. Uh, one guy I know is afraid of me because I kind of... Well, you are intimidating. I went, I went, well, I did. I went, I went full intimidation because he, he was being weird. They moved in and... <clears throat> he was in the woods. This is an adult. He was in the woods, like scaring the kids, and like we, you know, we don't know you. What? Like, I, don't, I don't know what this is. I, I don't even know that he was the. What? The, the He's guy. in the woods scaring the kids. Dude, he was in the what? in the woods scaring the kids. Like, like in twenty eighteen, he was uh, he was in the woods as a clown, oh. scaring you, kids. Were you there? Were you living with us when this happened? I, I think that's why you had me move, right? <laughs> no, <clears throat> I, I went I, I went to this guy's front door, and uh, and he came up, and I was like, hey, man. I just want to welcome you to the neighborhood. Listen, uh, me and a couple dads, we kind of, you know, got everything on lockdown. Me, Dan, Jason over here, you know, like I was pointing at different houses. And uh, and I was like, we just want to make sure our kids feel safe. And right now our kids feel really, uh, really weird in the woods right now. Somebody who looks just like you mm. keeps popping up and scaring the crap out of the kids. What's going on? We got to, we got, do we have an issue? And, That's nice that you did that. And uh, I, I had to get, I had to get rowdy. I had to get rowdy. Do you have a chainsaw with you? No, but I had this, I had uh, a neighbor in the, in the, in the, in the neighborhood that, you don't want to mess with. Define scaring the kids. What was, what was he yeah. popping out of logs? You know, what was he, was, he doing? He was, he was like hiding behind fences and trees and stuff. Going boo? No, he wasn't saying anything. He was, he was staring. <laughs> this is new. He was staring. <laughs> he was staring <laughs> at him. New. Boo is new. He was staring at him. It, was, it really scared him. Like a slender it freaked man. him out. They didn't go in the woods for a couple of weeks. I get it. They were kind of weird about. That is a bluster in the back. What did he say? He didn't say anything. Oh, to me? Yeah. He just said, "Oh, oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I scared anybody." Oh, and that right. was it. And I was like, oh, it's no big deal, man. I'm just making sure everybody knows where everybody is. You know what I'm saying? Right. Everybody's everybody's cool. We're all cool, right? We want our kids to, like, enjoy the neighborhood yeah. and all, all is good. And if we have any issues, don't forget, that guy lives over there. This was like a scary cat who had been <laughs> has been known for threatening some people yeah. in the area. <laughs> uh, but I had him on my well, side, so it was fine. You brought uh, <laughs> the power of the crown with you. You were like... Uh, I, I, I just you were the king's hand. I you didn't to, yeah. just threaten him as Moon Valjean. You <laughs> you made threats on behalf of the neighborhood. Oh yeah, the dads. I mentioned all the dads. I was like, yo, me, Dan, Dan's right behind you. Uh, uh, yeah. Jason's right over there. Well, Dan's got severe ass. PTSD. <laughs> just so you know. And I'm Roger, pretty, well, he told me he's been waiting his whole life to kill a guy. I'm yeah, he's sure. an excellent archer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Dan's got a black belt. Don't 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 play with Dan. Well, we got uh, we got new neighbors. I mean, directly next door neighbors. Uh, they've been in the house about a month. And uh, got to take them cookies or a pie or something. I know, and and we we didn't do that. And it's a young couple. What do you mean didn't I do it? You, you, did you, you do got that. a little time. You, no, you, we you, didn't. I thought you did. My wife went to go meet them. Yeah, didn't she make a little basket for that? She did. It's That's not nice. too late. Yeah. She did though this weekend. That's, That's okay. fine, dude. You got a quarter. I said they were outside with it. They have a little boy. Yeah. The, the the wife is gonna is, is pregnant. She's gonna have a kid next month. And there, she, my wife comes in. She goes, they're outside. Let's go outside. I go, it's too late. We're already past the point. Oh, what? no, you're wrong. She didn't give the basket? No, you, she did. Okay. Wrong. She made me go outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're wrong. You That's got a, all right. You got a full me. quarter, dude. It was Sunday. It was, it was Saturday or Sunday. I'm like, ah, I just don't want to meet anybody right now. <laughs> she goes, get outside. Put <laughs> shoes on. her. <laughs> You got three. You would never do anything if she wasn't like, let's go. Let's set the let's set the <laughs> put shoes on and get outside and go and meet look the neighbors. Normal. Let's set the time and the radius for good neighbor behavior. I would say you you have three months. Three months to welcome somebody if if you so choose. And then the radius of, of houses down left and right that you should know your neighbors' names should be what? Mm. How many houses? Five? Ten? Two? It depends uh, on what kind of neighborhood you have. Like the street. Yeah. 
Like, like for me, mean? there's a privacy fence behind me that's blocking the three homes that are kind of, you know, just behind me. And I've... Behind never, you doesn't count, right? That doesn't have to. Yeah, you don't Okay, I, I've never met... I haven't even... That's not even your yet. street. They got a different different street address. Okay, okay. But you know everybody else. You know everybody on your yeah, whole street. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right around me. I know. And everybody. I'm trying to think. The, the, the people... A crew in my... The, the wild thing is, I know most of the names on my side of the street. But right across, I only know the lady right across from us. Mm. Oh no, I'm sorry. No, I know. I know the ones next to her as well, and they're lovely. Uh, all, bo both of those folks are, are lovely, but the the houses right next to them, I have no idea. I've never seen. I've my, never spoken uh, to these people. My subdivision is uh, was built in 1997, and you have some of the people that were there from the beginning, mm -hmm. and they're they're aging out, and they're moving. Yeah, and they're getting crabby. Oh yeah, like they're those the crabby people. Those are the crabby ones. <laughs> uh, they complain about everything. Do you have people you in your sad? neighborhood that you've seen well, that you know you people. don't want to know? I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> the irony. Do you, have, do you have people in the neighborhood that you've seen that you know you don't want to know? Because I do. Oh. This, this, this gal drives so fast. Oh. And, I, and every time she does, I'm like, yo, there are kids everywhere. What, uh, who does this? I don't want to know you. I don't want you here. You're driving too fast. Your wife already went over there. I was like, me and the other moms. <laughs> <laughs> That's Cheryl. Dude, she doesn't That's care. She flies. Jamie's got anger problems. She's going to hurt somebody. I want to put, I told Tim this, I said, let's put this, we have our fire pit. I go, let's, this summer, we'll put it in the front driveway. That's a good move. And then we'll invite everyone, we'll say, hey, we're going to be doing s'mores, and if you'd like to come by, because we know our direct neighbors to the left of us and to the front of us, but our neighbors to the right of us, we don't know. And I've, we've Never waved met? and, um, we've waved and had pleasantries, but that's about it. And honestly... It's a whole thing because Fire pit. they got too many damn cars over there and oh, they keep parking the cars car at, in front of our house. <gasps> we got the same issue too. It's such a mess, dude. It's the worst. It is the worst. We just want our house. We just want our, we don't care if they have it in front of their own, but then they start creeping in front of our house. Mm. Curb Disaster. appeal. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Do you know all your, your neighbors? Yeah. I mean, I know all my, um, <clears throat> I don't know like five houses down, but I know my neighbor Barb to, to the side. Because we're on a corner. A Emily was our neighbor that lives in the duplex with us. And then Barb, we just, older lady, kind of we kind of helped take care of her. She's had some health issues. And then Corge is the cool lady that lives catty corner that keeps a loose gun in her purse. Love mm. that. I love her. She worked at the workhouse forever. She's retired now, but she still she just has a loose pistol in her purse. That's who you want on Neighborhood Watch. Right. Love her. Talk to her all the time. And I know the neighbors directly across, and of course we all know the crackheads. Yeah, yeah. That live, mm -hmm. that live across, right across from me. But there's a revolving door at the crackhead house, so I don't know them all. Yeah. Know them all, but I know their habits. I know the guy that sweeps the alley when I'm leaving mm -hmm. for work. He's out there. He's industrious. And then I know like the the mom who's actually paying all the bills, the grandma that everybody's like freeloading on over there, and the little girl that's there occasionally that comes over and lets herself in our backyard to play with our dogs. <laughs> And lets them out quite often. Oh, no. Hmm. Well, that's good. She's a sweet kid. Yeah. That's good. I feel so bad for her. Let's make the rule three. Does that feel good? Three, 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 three to the left, three to the right. The, person, like a, the person across from you across the and one. So three across from okay. you, three left, three right. That's good. That's it. That's what I have. I've got... That's a total of yeah. nine. One, that's, two. That's a lot of work. Three left, three but right. But not too much. One directly across the street. No, no, the three across. So uh, the the, the one across, too. and then the one next to to their right and left. Good rule. Okay, uh, right? Yeah. Does that feel good? good. Yeah, and then a couple good. random. I know a couple is. random people that are cool. Like I got a friend that lives like down the street, and then there's a couple doors down. There's some people that that Tina and I know. You know, it's also a neighborhood. It was a lot easier because you know a lot. There were a lot of young kids, mm -hmm. and uh, when my kids were in elementary school, you know, parents walk up to the to the bus stop, and you kind of congregate there. And oh yeah, my wife knows a, a lot more people from the bus stop. But I don't know where their houses and with are. Our, and with our hours, I was always home to pick up the kids from the bus stop. So I was one of the dads up there mm -hmm. when the kids came home from school. So I got to know a lot of the, a lot of the neighbors that way. Yeah, you know, there was a time when the kids were in elementary school and, uh, you know, there were three or four dads that worked either at home or had weird hours like I have. And, you know, spring day, you know. Have a couple of drinks at the corner, you know, waiting for the bus to come. And hell yeah, you know, one guy was going to roll up a bar cart. I'm like, yep, yeah, all right. Got him. <laughs> Shout out to Mike who moved to, uh, moved to Texas. He took his bar cart to Texas. Yeah, he's the one. Remember, we the saved kid. his cat. 
Uh, you saved his cat? See at the party? It's a George Street yeah. song. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's awesome. Uh, he's the one that uh, he's his cat, that. they were moving to Texas. Their cat jumped into the moving truck. Oh, yes. And uh, Saved by the Russo. We saved the cat. Because you suggested to look in there? Well, the moving company hadn't brought the truck to Texas yet. It was sitting in a parking lot. It was about 400 degrees that day. And they were the listening. Russo. Wow. Opened up the truck. Heroes. Saved that, saved that cat. It's pretty awesome. I've been having a neighbor issue. Oh, we can solve it. I don't know it. what you guys yeah. would do. <laughs> I've been keeping a pretty tight lid on it because it's been, it's really been chapping my ass. Oh. I don't think, I, so behind me, I don't know how you feel about alley neighbors. I don't really know a lot of my alley people because like across the alley, you know, I live in South City. So they got like, we got the big wall, retaining walls that are like six feet high. Mm -hmm. So that's not like I see... I think these these two guys, I think one of them maybe is like a grandson or they haven't been there the whole time I lived there, but they're there now. And they park on the side of our house at night. And the reason I think they don't live there, I think because they sit in their car and they drink beer. They drink Coronas all night long, like a 24 case of Corona. It'll be like music up, two dudes sitting in there, probably like in their 20s. And is they, this a nightly thing? Not nightly, but it's a couple times a week two, three times a week, and they throw the Corona bottles out the window onto the grass. Hmm. Like onto where I got grass? it. Well, there's like our yard. I guess it would technically be the city grass, but it's by my house. It's like the sidewalk. It's between the sidewalk and the street, like the little patch of grass. But I've gone out there like four or five times, and there'll be like 15 Corona bottles just like uh, strewn about. Man. And I'm like, then I see them out there drinking, and all I, I'm just looking out the window like... You guys are throwing bottles right now out in that grass, and I just want to come out there and go full Clint Eastwood. <laughs> From a Gran Turismo? Yeah, Gran, Gran Torino or whatever. Uh, just be like, Gran get Turismo, your bottles Gran off my lawn. It's just annoying because I'm like, there's a dumpster around the corner. Like, I don't care if you're sitting out there drinking beer as long as you're, just, you're not cranking your music. Yeah, like two you, in don't the want, and you, don't want to, you don't want to confront them. You don't know what's going on there. Yeah, well, cool. here's what I want to do. And, and Am I the a-hole? You don't want to call the cops either. I don't want to call the cops because I'm not a narc. But what I do want to do is go out there at 2 o'clock in the morning after the, the hubbub's all quieted down, and I want to put a Corona bottle under each tire of their car. Okay. So when they take off the next day, they bust those bottles under the tires of their own car. <laughs> and they'll eventually get the message that somebody's got their eye on them. Mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, or you can just put a car... <laughs> <laughs> okay, apparently I'm a psycho. No, I did not. No, 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 I didn't no, expect no. that kind of quiet. I, I like the thought. My mind would go <laughs> there too. I see it how serious. <laughs> my mind like, would go there too. Uh, might I recommend like buying like a small trash can and making a little sign that say Corona bottles go here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not spending my money. No way. I think we still how have that trash can. It's a little Rubbermaid trash can. It's the principle. Yeah, I'm with him on this. That's the, it's the principle of I shouldn't have to tell two grown men to go throw their bottles. They clearly the don't care. They don't care when they're and when who, they bust those they tires. Why in an alley? Huh? Why are they in an alley? It's not an alley. They're on the side of the regular street. I'm saying right around the corner of the alley is the dumpster. It is literally like a 25 foot. You know, wall. some shady stuff is going on. Mm -hmm. If if it's two dudes, how many times a week? Twice a week. At least, yeah. At least twice a week. They just drink Coronas on the side of the street. And a little, and and a little white Toyota Tercel. Oh, is it, a, is it a, a consistent days, like only Tuesdays and Thursdays or something? No, I don't know what days. It's just like I'll just randomly notice, and I've gone out and picked these Corona bottles up a couple of times. Because I'm taking out my trash, I walk right past it, and I'm like, there's like... It's not like one... You know, it doesn't even matter if it's one or two, but it's like eight to 12 Corona bottles just Jeez. like clearly well, being just like thrown out the window. Let's make up a reason why they're doing it. I think the reason they're doing it is because he's like, dude, trust me. Throw it out there in the yard. Tomorrow morning, come out here, see if it's even here. The yard like somehow soaks them up and they disappear. <laughs> yeah. well, he comes over them. in the morning, he picks them all up and then they come out and they're just <laughs> amazed with a miracle. Make up a reason. Why are they doing that there? I think it's a personal slide on me. Ah. Because people think, hate you, and that's why people hate doing? Rafe. No, I don't. You know he hates Corona. I think that they're just two dudes <laughs> sitting out there, two young dudes who think they're cool guys, who are like getting high, getting drunk, sitting in their car, listening to music, living with his grandma, thinking he's a cool dude, has his buddy over, and they just think it's like, just toss it out the window, dude, who cares? It's not you our don't problem. Think it's city uh, property. I we think, work in the area, and this we're on our break. I think it's two future billionaires. So. Yeah. 
geniuses mm. in the tech, mm. computer, and or rocket field. Okay. Steve and, Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Yes, and, and they have to get together because their wives are sleeping. Both wives do not approve of their drinking, but their okay. creativity is only stirred by skunky beer, mm. and they just don't have time. To throw it away. They have to meet here. This is their office right now. Coronas. Can I say this? <laughs> yes. Coronas is not the beer that you do this with. Because then you need a lime. And do they what? are Corona not cutting is, lime. Plan, the business. Is, plan the business. There's no limes in these bottles. That's, that's how I know they're not wealthy. Right. <laughs> yeah, but they're drinking Corona. They're that's, drinking the straight skunk. Yeah, Odd. it's expensive, isn't it? Is that a more expensive beer? Yeah. Corona is good cold, cold, cold. Right. On the beach or next to a pool. With a lime, though. With a lime. Right. But their bottles are perfect for throwing in the yard. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's I probably the best beer bottle to throw in Probably the, yard. the best beer bottle to throw, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> it's got that long neck. Oh, yeah. yeah That's a neck. good throwing great. bottle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a great hit it on what? the side of isn't the bar the same, and shank somebody. Isn't bottle, it the same you know? length neck <laughs> it as seems, any other bottle? It seems longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Corona? Yeah. It does seem longer. Yeah. It does it seem like It's because it doesn't have a label on it. I think these are men that are getting away from their girlf girlfriends or wives, and the only place to go is this side alley situation. And yeah, you're cleaning up their bottles for them. You know? And you they're like, well, this some, is a safe space. Maybe there's some like gay stuff, like getting away from their. No, I don't think that's. Oh. I feel like they're really stressed out. With the bottles? And they live down oh, the street. Oh, and getting, you're touching those. No. Getting, uh, <laughs> uh, now I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> you know, getting away, you know, getting off on a side street. I don't remember Corona bottles being brown. I thought they oh. were clear. Yeah, buddy. It is skunky, though. <laughs> <Bah>. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Bah. Something, you need to just keep participating. You brought it up. You need to do your part. You took it too far. What? Oh, well, oh. you know what? Don't bring dip to the party. <laughs> These two are planning something that's going to change humanity for the better, and you need to do your part and just continue to clean up after them. It's going to be all right. You're going to sneak well, outside. That's definitely. You're going to sneak outside and put bottles <laughs> underneath their tires. You need to start doing some weird stuff in your underpants out there. You need to start going out when they're out yeah, there you, and that's doing stuff. Great point. Okay. You need to make it too weird for them to be yep. there. You need to. That's make, a good idea. You need Tina to make too. that area. Just come out in my underwear and knock on the window and be like, "You guys got extra beer?" Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Don't don't even acknowledge them. Just come out like and on like a broomstick, like you're like you're riding a broomstick on your under right. in your well, underwear. Don't you even do, acknowledge you just, them. Yeah, this is you, a good idea. I like where something. we're headed now. Let's we workshop me making something. their life. Do not make eye contact. Do not let them know that you know that they're there. This is Elicit what you do. Elicit the help of your meth head neighbor. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. You get them. If right, that guy's not scaring them off, they're gonna be. It's gonna be a tough sell. I, I think should. you should walk out there in a bathrobe. Dude, I could give that guy five bucks and be like, when they're out here, you torment them. Just keep walking up and asking them but now what kind spending, of music they like. But now you're spending your money again. But, that, <laughs> but spending money on that one, right tormenting going, them versus <laughs> buying a trash can is a different $5 spend. And at least it's going to a good place. That's right. right. <laughs> and I'm I'm helping out a neighbor. Yeah, you're helping them out. <laughs> give the crackhead a list of random questions to ask them. Yeah. Just really just weird like... You guys like Hostess Twinkies? I kind of feel like he's like, already got those loaded up. And then like, you, walk, you know, walk it. away and then and say, so, what do you guys think of the Cardinals this year? And then like just walk away, two come fully, back five minutes later. Two fully hashed out ideas. This is, yeah. this is great. My third idea, or my other idea besides uh, putting the bottles under their tires, was to just slide in the back seat one night. Mm-hmm. Like an And Uber. just like you know, hang and be like, what's up, fellas? What gonna up? That's going to get you killed. Let's hang. That's going to get you that's killed. Gonna get you. I I'm, do I'm like the idea. Third place. That learn had is make the area, make the area uncomfortable for them. Mm -hmm. If you need help, I'm good at that. Okay, you're like I live in St. Charles, and my buddies Jason and Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get them down here. <laughs> Todd's got a crossbow. <laughs> Because remember, my mind always is, let's start a fire somehow. I don't know why. <laughs> my mind always goes to lighting start something fire. on fire. And I don't, I'm going to try to not do that in this situation. There's just several things that bother me. I don't like the littering. Mm -hmm. On top of the fact that it's or like. Or the loitering. Littering and loitering. Yeah. Get out of here. Hey, if you need to talk to them, just thank them for all the bottles that they've given you. Because now you have a great arsenal of Molotov cocktails. Mm. Ooh. Okay. Well. That seems more threatening than just putting the bottles under their tires. It does. How about That's a bad idea. Do that for You recycle the bottles and you get five cents a pop, right? They're giving me a job now. And then you save up. <laughs> you got a job already. This is a job. Yeah. What, whatever well, you pick, show it's, in still Michigan. Gonna, it's still going to cost you some minutes. And then you save up and you buy a car to put in that spot. Boom, problem yeah. solved, and they're never coming back because they got no spot. I think you should put some weird mannequins in some odd positions back there. 
Like, who do we know? Get some wigs and some mannequins and just start putting weird stuff back there. Picture a Gary Busey, like, hang it on the garage or whatever the wall is. That's cool stuff. You know? Start, walk that out would there. make them want to come. Well. Yeah, honestly, if I was some rowdy 21-year-old or whatever and something weird started happening, I would. it would make me want to go. Yeah, what's next? Yeah, I'd go, like, hey, we need to do this three nights a week because i got to <laughs> see what's going to happen on Wednesday. I don't know. At that point, everything's entertaining. You got any masks at so, your house? Of course. Okay. Unless they're freaked out. <laughs> I could hire your neighbor to scare them. Yeah. He be like, hey, man, weird dude. we actually got a job for you. It could be a way for you to mend your fences and help me out. You go over to your weird neighbor's house and be like, hey, you want to scare somebody? We got a couple guys. Tony well, Rafe, get the crackhead, give him fl flip him 20 bucks. I'm liking the crackhead idea flip because... Flip him 20 bucks. Start there. I'm not getting yeah. rid of the crackheads. <laughs> if I could, maybe I could become like the monkey king of the crackheads where they're like, this guy will give you $5 if you... Yeah, you then know I'm that... opening up a floodgate to where like, if I give him five bucks to do this, then every time he needs five bucks, he's going to be like, hey man, you got anybody you want me to talk to? Then I'm like... Is that like uh, that learn putting be... out uh, water for and food for Mr. Gray? Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, but then, you know what they say. Like every time, and, and I have this problem, is every time I get into something, I, I feel like I need to know and be an expert with it. And, and they're like, you know what? You just hire the expert. And that's what you need to do. Instead of you trying to figure this out and, 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 and break it all down and do it yourself, you need to hire the expert, the method. Yeah. yeah. You got somebody that's already built for this. It's fighting fire with fire. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, he annoys me. Yeah, you need to, uh, what is the what is the word? Uh, but I have the rule with them, or I'm like, keep it on your side of the street, and we're good. I don't care what you're now doing. Now you're inviting them to your side of the street. I know, that's a little... But, but if I just give them a day pass... You need to form an alliance. I'm going to give them a day pass. You need to form an alliance. <laughs> a day pass. I'm like, you have a day pass to come to my side of the street <laughs> for $5 to harass these guys, and it expires. <laughs> hey, real... You have a temporary visa. Real details. How are you going to get a hold of that guy? Work visa. Oh, he's up. He's sweeping the alley every morning. I could get him in. I'll get him tomorrow morning. Be like, hey. Oh, okay. So you're going to do it in person. But how are you going to get a mission. hold of him? Every day I come out to get in my car, this dude's got like a push broom sweeping the alley. And he's like, I'm just, I'm not doing anything weird. He's looking for something to do. So if you give him a mission. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. But, but how is he going to know? MH. Just say, how, hey. How is he going to know when the car is there? You tell him, hey, be on the lookout for this car <laughs> with these two guys drinking Coronas. And he's got something to do. So he will be on the lookout. I see. What if he misses him, though, and, and Rafe's watching this happen and he needs to get a hold of him? How's Can you call him work? on his track phone? Yeah, I'll call him on his cricket wireless. You need to get a track well, phone. Well, listen, I think we should enlist the help of the crackhead and we'll solve the, <laughs> that'll solve the problem. All right. There was some good, this was a good workshop. I appreciate good. that. Yeah, start um, there. There's some... Oh. I do want your opinion about this. And this was a, uh, this was a story that was on... Uh, uh, on the interwebs. And headline, angry homeowner writes note to tradesman who took toilet virginity. Eh? Okay, here we go. This woman is uh, getting some work done on her house, getting some renovations done. And uh, it's a house full of construction workers. So she's getting her, she's getting her, I think she's getting her kitchen redone. She's getting her bathrooms redone. Okay, a complete tear out of the bathrooms, all new... You know, vanity, mm -hmm. tub, toilets, all that stuff. Okay, so there's enough work being done where this woman and her husband paid to have a porta potty outside. Did they have the lattice around the porta potty like they do in Webster Groves when they're getting construction done, which is the dumbest thing I've ever seen? What do you mean? To class it up? Yeah, to class it up. If you go drive through Webster or Kirkwood, you'll see porta potties in the front yards of homes that are being built. And to class it up, they put lattice work around the porta potty. Like you can't tell what the hell that is. And I think That's it is hilarious. ridiculous. I well, like okay. It. So, like so th thing number one is it t is it tacky to ask your construction workers, hey, there's a lot of you guys here. I don't want y'all using the bathrooms. Right. Here's a porta potty. I think that's okay. That's yeah, nice. that's yeah. fine. I think that's okay. They would agree too. It's better than not giving them an option. I think most sane people would prefer not to go into a house if you know they're not uh, they don't know the people, and you'd rather go to the porta potty. So the homeowner, again, had the porta potties outside for the construction workers. She found out that one of the construction workers used her new toilet, broke, broke the seal, and and took the toilet's virginity. Oh boy! Oh uh, man, that's a weird what way of looking a at things. How upset would you be? And does she have, I mean, does, does she, she have. How does she know? There's streaks? Yeah. 
Oh, I'd be pretty bummed. I would be bummed too. But I'd let it go. The, I was going to say the next day. I'm going to say the next month. It might take me a minute to get over that. Hmm. But well, so there was no clause because sometimes when you're getting work done inside your home, they ask you like, "What bathrooms can we use?" Oh, really? Yeah. Like when I got my windows installed, the company said, "Hey, what ba can we use a bathroom? If so, where is that located?" And you have to like sign off on it. Well, this woman's calling it a criminal act. <laughs> that's totally different, though, right? I mean, that's totally different than a brand new toilet. Imagine if, yeah. like, it was all just just constructed. You, you, I mean, there is something that you want to you want to open that door and see. I want to yell Whoa! first. And yeah, take the first shower. I want to be yell. I want to yell first. Or is this a bad thing <laughs> on his part because they should have done a courtesy flush and like cleaned up the evidence? She you know? writes, disgusted by the criminal act they'd committed. Uh, she wrote a note before taping it to the lid of the new toilet saying, Dear Tradesman, the toilets in this house are not rightfully yours to use. We are paying for an outdoor toilet for your use. Not only did you take the virginity of our toilets, but you disrespectfully ignored the seal sign, ripped the tape, and continued to use it. Yeah, that's messed up. Whoa, if there was that is weird. In a this is the second time I'm cleaning your duty from this toilet. This is a criminal act. Please don't do it again. <laughs> yeah, that does suck. As, I yeah. mean, especially if you think about it like where... These are the homeowners that are going to have to clean it, and, and they are spending money. That, that's, that's the big difference here. They're the boss, and if they say don't do it. Right. And they're spending money to, to give you your own bathroom. Uh, that's, ooh, that's, that's kind of rotten, man. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I know, think it's time. really rotten. Especially tearing the seal, and then, and yeah, then, and then the leaving seal. streaks, too. Tearing and, the seal, and the, you know maybe leaving a log or two in there. Mm. Oh, well, that's and there's nice. a porta potty I like outside. That. I mean, you're giving them all the options and courtesies, and they are breaking a seal. Rave, is this grounds for a new toilet? I think so. <laughs> I think so too. I think you have <clears throat> sullied the throne. You sullied the Iron Throne. <laughs> now you have to give up your sword. If you are if you are looking forward to the construction work being done, mm -hmm. and finally, finally going into that bathroom. Breaking the seal yourself. Popping on with that lid. Taking your phone out. Like, you got to be on that toilet and long enough where your legs fall asleep. Oh, That's yeah. what I'm looking forward to. But no, another man's ass has been on this. What were their excuses? Maybe maybe they needed to test it. Uh, to test it, make sure the... Uh, Get Dale the seal in here. Is, yeah, the seal I is mean, good. Can't you... If, Dale, if it'll handle Dale, it. it'll handle <laughs> anybody. Dale checks all these toilets. <laughs> the only way to test this is to fill it up with a bunch of poop and then see if it flushes. Mm. Dale, Dale, Dale poops Campbell's soup can size turds. Yeah. They, they go down. <laughs> Trust me. Bring in the clogger. <laughs> He's quality control. <laughs> <laughs> he is the quality <laughs> control <laughs> department. <laughs> Oh, my God. Guy comes in. He's just eating a bowl of Wolf Brand chili as he's walking <laughs> through the... <laughs> Everybody's whispering, he's here. He's Clark. here. He's here. Like, you have to book you have to book him well in advance. There's yeah, only, yeah. like, three in every county. Yeah. yeah. I see him with his chest hair poking out and his work shirt's just kind 100%. of unbuttoned and a little gold chain. And suspenders. Hell yeah. Yep. Bring in the clogger. Let's see. He's the man. Let's test <laughs> his toilet's to limits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's got an Elvis taking care of business ring on. Oh, oh. TCG. <laughs> he stamps in the grout. Yeah. Sealed. <laughs> that's what he, that's what he, yeah, that's what he, like they, they used to seal the old wax. Like when yeah. the, if the clogger, if the toilet passes the test, the clogger just puts his taking care of business ring seal on it. And he's like, this was past inspection. <laughs> Guy like that sacrifices his entire diet for that job too. He only eats burnt uh, steaks. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. He's got two women on his arm yeah, and a He's eating camera. chili out of the can. Yeah, dude. burnt <laughs> steaks, no veggies, no veggies. <laughs> Bring in the clogger. <laughs> <laughs> here, guys. If somehow that music just comes on when the door on the job site. Yeah, bad to the bone. Mm. Yeah. What kind of truck does he drive? No, uh -oh. it's a Camaro. Oh, he drives a Camaro? And it's does got he? T tops. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll go with a T top. That's Camaro. my fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> we actually don't know his name. They, he only goes by the clogger. The clogger. He's got a name probably like I Clancy almost feel like it's like an old school executioner. Like, they don't even see his face. He's got like a black hood on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you don't even get to know. Who it is? Yeah, it's like the firing squad. You know what I mean? Like the clogger comes in. Can't talk to him. No, no thanks. No, he's just there for work. No time. He goes. 
He walks in. He, yeah. Pour him to the toilet. That's it. He does yeah. his thing. He's got seven toilets to crash. It's like today. Master Blaster in Thunderdome. <laughs> he takes his cigarette and he flicks it and it blows up the lattice and por- porta potty in the and everybody's, <laughs> and While everybody's waiting for him to, like, uh, all the construction workers are waiting with bated breath. Everybody's silent. <laughs> waiting. For, work <laughs> well done. Waiting from the, for the door to open. <laughs> and, like, he doesn't say a word. He just gets back in the Camaro and leaves. And you go in there uh, to make sure that seal is there. No streaks either. <laughs> Clean. Oh, oh yeah. The clogger don't leave no After streets. he's gone, you get a text from just a zero, and it says green. Like, good. Green light. Thumbs up. Green light. The clogger don't leave no streaks. Pass. Right. He's a That's professional. Right. Right. <laughs> he's a professional. So, yeah, I think the woman's got a case here. What happens when he fails inspection, though? What's the clogger do then? Takes a sledgehammer to the whole room, and they got to start over. You have to make sure she's up to code. Yeah, and you gotta... Oh, that's what I like that. <laughs> the clogger comes out, and he just comes... Back in with like a nine pound hammer. <laughs> what a display. Everybody starts clearing out. They're like, the clogger's back. And he just smashes the toilet and he smashes the bathtub for good measure. Redo it. Do it again. Yeah, this woman, I, I think this woman has a uh, has a case here for at least deducting the price of the porta potty off, off the price of the total. Of the total. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Oh, there's something called the clogger? I didn't realize it, but uh Krusty the Clown and Simpsons at Krusty Burger <laughs> has a burger called the Clogger. <laughs> which is a greasy, fat dripping burger available uh, to buy at Krusty Burger. Krusty uses uh, a pig. <laughs> perfect. Uh, guys, you know what today is? Today is uh, National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day, and I had a peanut butter and jelly last week. I had one yesterday. Just on, like, I, we were going out somewhere. I'm like, I'm starving. And we had good bread. Oh, what'd you have? What'd you have? What, what, what do you mean good bread? White I bread? I know. It was, like, it was white. It was like a sourdough. Like a sourdough. A uh, sourdough loaf. peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, That's something yummy. I don't think I've had. But it was like a soft sourdough. Nice. Sounds good. And I did a half, of, like a half of one. Like like one one piece and then folded and the, and it over. Fold? Yeah, and did the fold. What's your ratio? 50-50? Oh yeah. You go no, with the, with the fold, you can't do too much jelly, or else the jelly comes out the side. So mm. eighty twenty. Probably seventy thirty. And seventy creamy. peanut butter, thirty jelly. Okay, two slices. What's your ratio? I'll go probably sixty forty. Sixty forty PB. Yeah. And I used to be a I used to be a seventy thirty jelly, and I've I've eased it back. I mean, I'm not crazy anymore. Mm. Probably a 50-50 at this I'm point. I'm telling you, man, Same. it hit the spot because it was creamy peanut butter and it was strawberry jelly and it, man. I'm a grape jelly girl. Me too. It just... That sounds good. I haven't had that grape jelly girl. It just hit right. It just hit right. And, um... Wait, it's National PB&J Day? Yeah, today is. National mm. PB&J Day. Um, here is the PB&J timeline, for those of you. The first documented peanut butter and jelly. Mm-hmm. 1901. So basically, the PBJ is only 123 years old. Hmm. Why did they do this? Like, how did it come about? Home economist Julia Davis Chandler publishes a recipe for peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in the Boston Cooking School magazine of Culinary Science and Domestic Economics. The recipe. Two pieces white bread. I guess in ounces, how much peanut butter, ounces, how much jelly. Mm-hmm. Okay. But that's 1901. It's the first documented. The OG was a 50-50? I, I, don't know what, I don't know what the original recipe was. But that's the first time it appeared anywhere. Interesting. The first documented PB&J is in 1901. 1968, Goober, Goober Grape hits the shelves. Right. Goober Grape, that's from Smuckers, the pre-swirled peanut butter and jelly combo in the jar. The ultimate laziness. That great in college, I though. would eat straight out of the straight out of the jar <laughs> <laughs> really? with a spoon. Yeah, that's for that's for no time for bread yeah. moments, right? Because yeah. then, because then, I don't know. It's, it's, it wasn't very spreadable peanut butter. Yes, I'm saying they're creating more work. Let me ask you this: Do you ever put it in tortillas and have PBJ in a tortilla? Never had. I've never I do done that it. with. I'm apples. not opposed to it. <clears throat> I'll it's put peanut good. butter down and then apples mm. and you in toast a tortilla. That. Yeah. Whoa. It's really good. And then honey drizzled over that. Mm. Whoa, more. It's a nice little treat. So Smuckers puts out Goober Grape, 1968. Uh, another leap in pre-made sandwich technology by Smuckers is Uncrustables. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Th th that might be the best version of a PB&J ever until you see the sugar content. Well, too much jelly. They overdo the jelly in those things. And what year were Uncrustables out? I see what you're saying. 20, 2000? But I still think it's perfect. The it was a so soft. 1998. <laughs> 1998 Smucker's Patents Uncrustables, the crimped PB&J sandwich. The crimped. I mean, the, what is it What is it that makes that the most attractive part of right. it? Right. <sighs> because it's smushed. It's, it's almost like it's, factory it's sealed. Yeah, it's yeah, classy. You, you, you made it a pocket? This is what I've always wanted to do. Oh, it's, it's perfect. But don't look at the uh, nutritional facts. No. <laughs> and then, you know, to celebrate National Peter Butter and Jelly uh, Day, uh, let's not forget the song. Uh, it's peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time. Way yet, way yet. Peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly, peanut butter jelly with a baseball bat. Oh, uh, and of course, there's uh, Brian doing oh. it. It's peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time. Way yet, way yet, way yet, way yet. Now, there you go, there you go, there you go. Now, that'll be in her head all day. Yep. Thank You're you You're welcome. So celebrate today, National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day. I don't know how you're going to do that, by, other than by making it pb and J. I'll have two of them. Yeah. The best with chili. Oh, yeah. You know what? Everybody says that, and I still haven't tried that. Never yeah, done it. Something I, I, need to, I just need to make it. Mm, huh. Got to do it. An alarm. I want to try that. That's what the clogger does. Yeah, you want to clog something up. There it is. Oh, I was I talking can. with some friends the other day really? about this on Saturday. Are we had chili on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Uh, Saturday was what was it? What was the weather? It was it was nice seventies. Yeah, normal beans. No, we don't. We do no beans in the house. Texas style. No yeah. beans in the house. I know. What do you mean no beans in the house? That's a rule. No, like no, what? in the chili. Oh, I like beans in my chili. The boy doesn't. It's all. <gasps> oh. oh boy. Oh, so who's the boss in this Sorry house? Sorry for that. I know. You have to listen. I have to make compromises some places. Oh, okay. But I got the, oh, it's 70 degrees out and you're having chili? Oh, in our house, chili's an all-year-round thing. Me too, me too. I said it was soup. I'm, I could eat soup at any time. Nah, soup is different for me. <laughs> I will fight for your rights <laughs> to eat soup whenever you want you. and chili whenever you want. Thank you. No, I'm, I, listen, you can do what you want. It's, you're a psycho, but. <laughs> I make soup tonight. I don't know. I soup a wild is, Tuesday. Soup is underrated. My so, mother-in-law would come to my house and the first thing she would do even before unpacking, is put a giant pot of chicken soup on st on on the stove. Bless her heart. That's and great. And she goes, uh, there was one time I walk in, it had to be 4,000 degrees out. Mm -hmm. She says, do you want soup? I go, are you out of your mind? Why is that hot food any different than any other hot food? Yeah, I mean, you're weird. That's weird. You know? You know, I don't even, I never have soup. And uh -huh. every time I have... <laughs> Ramen. <laughs> I, I, it, at the bottom, I'm, su I'm, I'm spooning the, the broth and everything, and right. I always tell myself, oh, man, this is pleasant. I should do this more. And I never do. We were just at Noodle House on Saturday. Yeah. And at the end, I was like, you know, I'm eating my Hebrew hammer. I got the Hebrew, the Hebrew hammer. That's, great. that's your yeah. favorite. I, I actually was at Love the desk. The I said, hammer. I'm going to get what Riz gets. I'm going to go a Hebrew, Hebrew hammer. hammer. And while I'm slurping the, the broth at the end, I thought, man, I'm, I need to do soup more. This is kind of nice. Yeah, man. You got a thing. Learn. You got, you, Thank you're, you. You're on to something. Mm. Imagine, you know, working outside, pulling weeds, sweating. Yeah. You'll Come inside and your mother-in-law goes, you want soup? What, do you want hot wings? How's that any different? Get out of here. Because <laughs> there's air? I see your point there. I see your point. Hey, and is there something to, I've, I've also noticed this. Is there like an age, and if, if there is, I'm guessing it's 40, that I want spicy everything? And yeah. I don't, it's not that I'm thinking spicy. It's that the option now sounds attractive when it's, when it's preached at me. So we were, uh... uh um, driving back in uh, at some gas station or something. Uh, was it Wendy's, maybe? It was Wendy's, I, I think. And I was like, oh, I'll have a chicken sandwich. And they said, classic or spicy? And I went, well, spicy, of course. And my brain, like, answered before I even could think about it. Mm -hmm. Why is it that I'm wanting spicy things now? I never, I never did that before. We're yeah. getting older. Our taste buds are out. Because oh, so, I'm too, so I'm now, we, now we need something to day. kick it? Yes. Mm. I don't know. I think it's just better. It, it is better. better. I've always, but it was never better before. Life. I've always had that option. It's well, not you're, better. It's, you're advanced. It's the sadness of Kronos. We talked about this while you were gone. You get to a certain age where all the you've experienced all the joys. Oh. You're running out of stuff. <laughs> That's why you start eating blue cheese. That's why you start eating spicy foods. Bad foods, if you will. Oh, Sardines. Palace change. And I think you uh, you just lean into some of the... You're like, I don't, I don't know what's left. 
in the world. But the spicy chicken sandwich might get me through today. Yeah, so I'm not even, I'm not, I don't even is, think about it, though. It is, I uh, you know, I, I need to hurt myself just to feel. Yeah. But, but yeah. I'm, not, I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I'm not, ta- I'm not talking about the, the competitions. The or Yeah, I'm not even talking about hot sauce. I'm just talking about, like, <laughs> when somebody says an option of this or this spicy. I go, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, well, this I think spicy. as yeah. you get older, your taste buds kind of dull. Must be. Maybe that's it. Hmm. Yeah, wasabi at all, man. Must be, because I, I I don't even really eat those kind of sandwiches, and this was the greatest sandwich I've ever had. Well, bringing it back to Mission Taco, they got some. If you if you don't if you don't watch out, and if you don't read the menu, they'll sneak some like you know habanero oh, yeah. soaked uh, onions in there. You go, yes, please, boy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, please. What uh, is that? Woo. I hated spicy food when I was younger. I lo- yeah, I love it. Yeah. I mean, not enough where I where I, it's unbearable. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah, I'll take a little. I still remember the very first time I ever saw somebody put hot sauce on a sandwich, and I was probably five or six. And I was at my aunt's house, and it was my cousin. He put hot sauce on a sandwich, and I was like, what is this? So I copied the same thing, and from that that moment on, I'm like, this is where it's at. Life changed. Yeah. All right, guys, listen, we got to take a break. But uh, first... Got to shout out the Team Riz member of the day, which is brought to us by Hot Shot Sports Bar and Grill, St. Louis's home for Blues hockey from O'Fallon, Missouri. Scott Silverberg. Yes, yes Scott. Scott. Team Riz member of the day. Man, I feel like you could do anything with that name. Silverberg. Scott Silverberg. Scott ah. Silverberg. Captain. Uh, Scott has been a uh, loyal Rizzo listener since the very beginning. Even listens to the podcast while in the shower. Love that. <laughs> Scrub it up, buddy. <laughs> uh, loves all the members of the show. Is so grateful to the show over the years uh, for the laughter they provided him. Uh, Scott has met multiple members of the show, uh, including Jeff. Cannot wait to rock his Team Riz jersey, wrapping his favorite morning radio show. From O'Fallon, Missouri, Scott Silverberg is our Team Riz member of the day. Get super sweet Team Riz member of the day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up on 057thepoint.com slash Team Riz. All right, welcome back to the program. Phone number 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. The Mick Ultra Studio Cams. 1057thepoint.com slash Riz. The socials at R-I-Z-Z. Show your emails. Riz Show at 1057thepoint.com. Instant feedback through the 1057thepoint mobile app. We'll play a matchup with Moon in just a little bit. Give away some fabulous prizes, including tickets to go see Rob Zombie with Alice Cooper. We have a pair of, uh, well, a couple pairs of tickets to go see the Smashing Pumpkins. Big summer show just announced August 21st at the Amphitheater. And we got tickets to go see a very sold-out Palais Royale Thursday over at the Duck Room. Hey, uh, thank you all for the lovely 10-year anniversary uh, memories and wishes and messages. And Super cool to see all that stuff on the social medias. Uh, shout out to listener Sean who sent us a, a box of goodies. Didn't have to do that, Sean. Thank you. Box of goodies, including this like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing, which was my favorite turtle, Donatello. And uh, it has teeth, and it's the freaking weirdest, dude. The teeth are like so real. They feel real. They look real. They're, it's very bizarre. Yeah. Very bizarre. It's it's called a um, a fuggler, a. It's disturbing. I'm sorry. What? A fuggler. It's like the new. It's like the new. Um, like a plush toy, and it's like monster, uh, ugly. Oh, I lit it on fire. Ugly I was something scared, monster. And I'm like this guy, we need to kill this with fire. It has teeth. It's very bizarre. It like human a, teeth. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle with human teeth. Hmm. <laughs> Sean gave me two new uh, stress squishies and uh, also like a bullhorn, which not like an actual like bull. Well, like it is a actually horn. Like bullhorn. Yeah. Like it's like a horn, yeah, like an like animal's horn. horn. Like I can drink out of it, like a Viking. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> On my desk. Just what you always wanted. Yeah, I am a, I'm an Aries. I'm a ram, so that makes sense. On oh. Monday, you were like, man. <laughs> Monday morning, you were like, man, I would love to drink out of like a ram's horn. Yes. And then after the show, boom, Magic. Sean comes through. Loved it. <laughs> yeah, you should have seen Sean. us in there fumbling around like a, uh, we were trying to figure out how to, how to put it up. Like oh yeah, I had a. There was like a piece of metal that we're like, we assume this is a stand. Like, yeah. how, how does this work? Right. Like, it took three of us. We're like, <laughs> you dadded it up for me. You're like, I'll get it. Like, oh, it's, it's, get it to me. It'll yeah. happen. I uh, also got to shout out uh, listener Nick, who uh, left me a nice little surprise on Friday up at the front desk. Uh, left me like a Derek Jeter baseball card in a case Whoa. with like a Derek Jeter like coin. Wow, like a Derek Jeter commemorative coin. Whoa, yeah, nice. 
Nice. Hey, listener, Nick. That's awesome. That's yeah, very cool. that's very cool. Very nice of you. All right, so before the break, I asked you this question. And somebody actually asked us on Reddit, and over a 1,000 people voted on this. If your non-dominant hand got replaced by a robotic hand, what gadget would you include in your robotic hand? Now, in this scenario, they gave five different gadgets, and you had to pick one. But I'm just going to ask you guys before I give you the options. Okay. Rafe, I'll start with you. Ah. Uh. If you find gadget, if you whatever would be attached to your hand, like anything, anything, like I'll, I'll start. For, like, I, for me, I would include like a laser cutter, like a laser, like oh, a laser cutter. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's a good oh. idea. That's a good. I mean, yeah. He basically just turned yourself into an X Man. Yeah. I'm going vac uh, vacuum hose. <laughs> <laughs> Where does it go? Uh, Where's the charge? I'm gonna go? have like a. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those weird like um, slinky arms, and it's gonna. I'm gonna be able to. Cause, dude, I can't tell you how often. Cause this is a little bit of my like obsessive compulsive disorder. I want to vacuum stuff up all the time. Oh. Like right now, there's crummies down here. I want to suck those things up, and so that would just help me out a lot. So you would just like remove like the tip of your finger. And I would. Then... I would remove. I would have like a penguin hand, dude. Like it would be these. <laughs> I would have my thumb, and then you know how like the attachment on the vacuum hose to like do the like a cute suck ups. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be. I would just. <laughs> yeah, slice yeah. It down. Did you just I say acute suck ups? I did, and so I would just be able to have an acute sucker right here, and I just boop every crumb. Yeah, well, yeah, and with that hand to be able to go in between seats, yes. like in between seat cushions. Is this one of those things where you have to think it through, like a, like a genie wish? Like, if you if you just said, "I want a vacuum hose here," but you didn't like put the vacuum somewhere, then all of a sudden now your hand is just a limp hose, like right. that does nothing. Mm -hmm. So, like, oh, do we have to think that kind of stuff through? Like, and there's like an extension power sources? too. Like my my wrist will extend into the slinky arm. So like if I so need we to, need to get like the ceiling fan, right? Mm -hmm. And retra <laughs> retractable. Like you just press your shoulder. Yep. And <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, what do you want? Like what do you want on your uh, your robot hand? So when you say robot hand, do I have a functional hand now, like a, just a, ro a metal like fingers? Yeah. So I can still write. You can still, yeah, it's your non-dominant hand though. Well, I still I play, I play guitar and you know all that yeah, stuff, well, so I can still do that. Sure. Mm, I don't know something with power. Mm. Something with power, uh, like a, a power washer. A light. No, I mean, I mean, like I was actually thinking that. I mean, like something. Scott, I could... we know yours is a bottle opener, so. Oh, you know what? A, a light. Yeah, lush. I would probably, <laughs> maybe, maybe a light, maybe a flashlight. That's probably what I would need most. I'm trying to think, like, what am I going to need the most? What am I going to get the best bang for my buck here? Right. Minute to minute. Vacuum's great for you. Screwdriver, a drill. Yeah, but I, I mean, how often am I screwdriving oh, I mean, things? Yeah, the power washer would be nice because it, it could be used for a bidet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Instant cleaning. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going that route. Good idea. It'll just be nice. You might be bored outside a That's gas right. station waiting on the car to use clean the... You put the weak nozzle, you got a shower? Right. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, you got a, a shower. Drink if you need it. Okay, so oh, where are you yeah. getting the water? It's, well, let's, That's just, okay. let's just say you have in, inside your body... Infinite. Infinite. Mm. Like, I have a where lot am of I get, water Where am I body. getting the power for my laser cutter? Right, right, right. I right. don't know. Like, I, you know, I just don't want him taking a shower now he's dehydrated. So can he be a gas pump? He Well, he's got a, you know, he's got a drink. The gas pump. Is Maybe nice. he's got a drink got to a get it to refill fountain. the. Uh... You know what? Yeah, I want a hose. Yeah. I want a water hose. I think he's on to something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rafe, what do you got? Can you have a gas pump? Sure. Well, you can have whatever you want, bud. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can Don't smoke. Like, uh... I'm going to take a 40 on pump, Rafe. <laughs> yeah. Now, now you're a golden goose. Yeah. yeah. Dude, you'll make so much money. That's right. why I was getting in my head about it. I'm like, well, how gadget? What kind of gadgetry are we talking about? All right. Well, here's the Let's, here. I'm a sh or a little helicopter because I would love to be in the middle of a yeah, conversation that's boring and just raise my hand <laughs> and be like, uh, just uh, my finger opens up and, it's like, ch -ch 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 -ch, and I just fly away from your boring conversation. That's me. Why are you raising your hand? Hey, that's me. <laughs> and I just disappeared like Poppins into the sky. Uh, I'd, well, I'd be like, uh, you know, Moon's talking about how. Disney World is inspiring. It was amazing. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. <laughs> bah. That's so fun. Uh, bah. All right, here are the options they gave you. Here are the options. They, now you got to pick one of these. Oh, there's options? There, I, I, yeah. Oh. I, there are options. I wanted to see what it was without options. Here are the options. Okay. If your non-dominant hand had got, got replaced by a, robot, a robotic hand, what gadget would you include? A flashlight in the palm... An integrated smartphone with touchscreen. Hmm. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, but I already have that. I've got a pocket for that. Yeah. I'm not going to okay. waste okay. it on this. Okay. Powered screwdrivers on your fingertips. 
<laughs> Retractable claws like Wolverine. Oh, yes. Ooh. Whoa, so Wolverine or R2-D2, basically. Or super strong grip. Like oh, Spider-Man? Out, out of those, I'm going grip. Yeah, grip. We're talking Spider-Man level grip? I could climb building grip? Super strong grip. Yeah. Or like I got a firm handshake. That's way different powers. Uh, I'm assuming your power to grab on and hold something. Oh, yeah, I'm doing it. More, yeah. than, more than just... I'm doing that. I have a firm handshake. And second place is flashlight. The what? rest of them, the rest of them. Oh, I, flashlight. Yes. Yeah, flashlight. <laughs> yes. Scott. I'm sorry. Yeah. Phone. I already got. Screwdriver. That's, it's it's, it's already within distance. Flashlight's within distance too, but like that'd be, that'd be pretty. And the flashlight is integrated into the smartphone, so why not right. just do the smartphone that comes with the flashlight? Yeah. Well, that's why it's my second place. For for out of those options, the grip is is that's hands. I'm going claw. Yeah, you go me. Wolverine Claws. Mm -hmm. Me too. It's self-defense. I'm slowly morphing into a cat anyway. This will just speed things up. That's a good point. Hmm. Be good. So you going Wolverine Claws? I'm going Wolverine Claws. Yeah, Out of those well. uh, options? nice. You'll win. I can't believe we're not all doing that. No. I, Wolverine Man, Claws I are know. second. Super strong grip. Is yeah, I think but super strong grip. you can do that with I'm the claw. Grip. I'll I'm cut your grip. grip hand right off. Right. I don't know. That's yeah, yeah right. Claws. I'll squeeze your claw hand off. Game over. But you don't have super strength. Why, why it's not like you're putting fighting? your claws through walls. No. Well, I'm we assuming we're going to fight. No, we're point. not fighting. Yeah, well, what do you need the grip for then? The grip you never have oh, to. I was thinking about like climbing. Well, I wasn't even thinking about that. Well, then you just got one hand. I was thinking about right. working on stuff. You can't even get on to. You just got to. It's like a magnet, like on the side of the helicopter, <laughs> and you're just, <laughs> <laughs> you're just flying through. You're the, the air. weirdest rock climber on earth. You're just one hand, like you. You're just yeah, jumping. listen. If it's if it's a cliffhanger situation, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging on forever. Where I'm trying to save the woman from falling into the abyss. Uh huh. Shh, my claws going in the side of the mountain, and I'm just chilling. You don't have super strength. You can't put a, you can't put your blades through something. Like oh, that. Well, you, you don't have the strength for that. Well, you, just, you just have Maybe the blades. Maybe not rock, but like oh those those. You blades. just have knives. Wolverine's blades go through stuff like butter. Yeah, his his does. But he's got uh, well, he's, he's got a skeleton that's made out of steel or whatever. Well, they said Wolverine claws. I assume I get his adamantium skeleton. No, you just it get the claws. cut through steel like butter. <laughs> this is my fantasy. These yeah. are my claws. <laughs> well, America. If you spoke. guys get to decide what your grip is, I get to decide what my claws cut. Through. America but they spoke. said super strong. And America <laughs> says super strong grip with number one. All right. Yeah. Wolverine claws did not come in second. Whatever, Ooh. dude. That's last. Uh, second was smartphone in hand. That's stupid. That's, that's also stupid. stupid. That's last. Hello. I don't want that. It's already <laughs> honest. Uh, can you know. put tape over the, like, it, you know how men put tape over the cameras? Like, what are you going to do? Have tape on your hand the whole time? No. Yeah, what if in 20 years we found out that these really are, like, the x-ray machines in the 20s that they were selling, and it's, like, horrible for us, and now you're like, God, I got, well, oh, I got one I'm built in. Assuming. What a boring thing to choose. Assuming yeah. there's no health drawbacks. But I still already got, I already got one of those. <laughs> this is my ring finger. And your hand's going to go dead because, yeah. like, Wolverine you got to hold claws it up like third. This. Is it going to update? And how do you That's even upsetting. scroll with the thumbs on the, if your phone is here? You got to just one hand it? Oh, you just. My this. ass. Nobody's doing that. <laughs> this. Yeah. this. Yeah, that this. looks really stupid. You're, what, you type, Nobody's ooh, doing typing out one <laughs> at a time? Schnick. It can take you 600 years <laughs> of text. You only have one hand. That's Wolverine claws. That's still cool. This is my good hand, dude. Still cool. Non-dom. You're non-dom. I hate You're that non it's non-dom. Non-dom. But that's still cool. That's where the grip comes in handy. I'd work. I'd put my other arm in a sling to make my non-dom dom. I'd dom up my non-dom. Mm, well, all right. So, smartphone second, Wolverine Claws third, flashlight, and then screwdrivers. God, what a... Hmm. You oh. think super strong grip is boring? It's better than... I'm mad that smartphone beat Wolverine Claws. Me too. That's upsetting. I don't think, I, and that's, that's culturally claws upsetting. We're second for me. I just feel like people really weren't thinking it out. If I think grip, Freddy Krueger ruined this for the claw. If people the grip was that. like Spider Man, then I might. But it doesn't come with the webs. I don't know. I'm probably still taking the Wolverine claws. Man. Andy, can you turn the super grip off? Because now you're gripping everything hard. And that's yeah, you've yeah. yeah. got control. Yeah, you've got that. control. Yeah. All right. Do you? Like your claws aren't out <laughs> all the time. Like you could control the claws. Okay. All right, today is uh, April the 2nd, back in the day, 511 years ago in 1513, Spanish explorer Ponce de Leon landed in Florida in search of the Fountain of Youth. And he found it, by the way. He did find it, Fountain of Youth. It's down in Florida. Uh, 68 years ago, 1956, Johnny Cash records I Walk the Line 
at Sun Studio in Memphis. The song becomes Cash's first number one country hit. Uh, 54 years ago, 1970, I never saw this movie. Patton was released. George C. Scott as uh, badass World War II General George S. Patton went on to win seven Oscars, including Best Picture, Best Actor, and Best Director. Anybody see that, Patton? Yeah, it's I great. know the famous scenes, you know, from it. Yeah. I've seen the old school when it was on cable TV with a lot of commercials, so you kind of start blanking out over time. Yeah. Never saw that. I've, I've seen, seen it, it in its recently. Head. It holds Hold up. up. Hold up. Yeah, I mean, it's, yes, it's definitely like a character film, like a biopic, like an OG biopic. George C. Scott's great in it. Is that the one he won the Oscar and then wouldn't take it? No, that was Brando. Brando won for Godfather. Oh, George C. Scott turned one down. Oh, did he? May, he may have turned it down. He did win Best Actor. He may yeah, have turned that down, too. Best Name. He's got a sentence for a name. George C. Scott. <laughs> uh, 46 years ago, 1977, Fleetwood Max Rumors hit number one in the U.S. for the first time. It spends an astonishing 31 weeks at the top spot. Uh, 32 years ago, 1992, mob boss John Gotti convicted in New York for murder and racketeering, sentenced to life in prison. 26 years ago, 1998, Rob Pilatus of Millie Vanilli dies at the age of 32 after overdosing on a combo of drugs and alcohol. 23 years ago, 2001, Albert Poulos makes his debut with the St. Louis Cardinals. He played left field that day and went 0 for 3 in an away game against the uh, Colorado Rockies. And 19 years ago... 2005, Pope John Paul II died at the age of 84. He was succeeded by uh, German Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, who became Pope Benedict XVI, who then retired eight years later, and now we have Pope Francis. Pope Francis. And that's what happened back in the day. All right, time to find out what's going on in the world of music and entertainment with your Crab on Celebrities. Yes, let's start things off with The Offspring. Noodle says, we're almost done with the next LP. We're hoping to get it done by the end of April. We're going back into the studio when we get home. Uh, working again with Bob Rock, who produced their last three albums. Wolfgang Bobby Van, Rock. Van, ha uh, Wolfgang Van ha Halen was on uh, Chris Shiflett's podcast. And he was talking about the legendary red, white, and black guitar that his father, Eddie Van Halen, made iconic. And, you know, everybody called it the Frankenstein. That's what I thought it was called. Right. Well, Chris Shiflett asked Wolfie, said, uh, you know, is that actually what it's named? And he says, officially on the case, it says Frankenstein. But people can call it whatever they want. Dad never really had a name for it. It's just what people called it. But officially on the case, for the nerds that really want to know, it does say Frankenstein. Okay. So... Breaking news. So the the guitar case at Frankenstein, yeah. it never really had a name. Right. So it, people just said that, and then Eddie Van Halen adopted it as the official name. Mm. Well, well Frankenstein, Frankenstein do need names. A good guitar. Because he took a whole bunch of different pieces and put the thing together, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, if, you, if you're referring to a guitar, get me Frankenstein. Right. But I'm just saying, like, a good guitar. If you've got a good guitar, it needs a name. It's like a ship. Well, that's what I like about your YouTube story of the gear because you talk about your guitars and you have different nicknames. Or I have names, names for, for them. them. Yeah, there's one like one of my main guitars doesn't have a name, so I ask people to to help me name it, and I'm I've narrowed it down to four. What's the most famous guitar? Uh, probably Trigger. Blackie or the BB King one. Um, Lucy. 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 Yeah. I think Lucille. I would say Frankenstein. Oh, Lucille. 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 Uh, I would say. Uh, I'd say Trigger. Yeah, Trigger's got to be the one. Oh yeah, the yeah, that too. Guitar. Um, I'm just going through the genres. Which one was Blackie? That's Eric Clapton's, 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 Clapton's guitar. Um, Kurt Cobain's acoustic guitar from... But does it have Unplugged? a name? Unplugged? I don't know if that's going to name Well, then it's never going to be the most famous Ooh. guitar. That's Sorry, true. they have to have names. Yeah, they do have to they're, have They're names. ships or... you gotta, you got to have a name. I got my dad's Gibson Hummingbird back last year, which I, he played every day of my life until he died. And uh, I decided to name it Beeble, which was my dad's middle name. Awesome. So, oh, that's a great one. I love it. Uh, there's uh, Greeny. Oh, yeah, Greeny. That's a... Uh, Peter uh, Green from uh, Fleetwood Max Kirk, guitar. Kirk Hammond has Kirk it Hammond has it now. Uh, he paid a ton for that, yeah, too. Yeah, he did. The he, red he special is Brian May's guitar from Queen. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Also, he, he, I think he made that with his dad. Uh, there is Frankenstein from Eddie Van Halen. There is the Monterey Strat from, that's Jimi Hendrix's guitar. From the Monterey Festival uh, that he lit on fire? The Black Strat from David Gilmore. Okay. 
Uh, number one is uh, Jimmy Page's Les Paul. Just says, get me number one. Number one. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan also had a number one. His Stratocaster, get me number one. Hmm. That's kind of that's kind of cool. And numbers <laughs> count. I mean, numbers count. Uh, Billy Gibbons Literally. has a guitar called Pearly Gates from ZZ Top. I wonder what the furry guitars were called. Furry ZZ Top's from furry <laughs> guitars? Mm -hmm. Fur Furball. Furballs. Chuck Berry's guitar have a name? Oh, I'm sure it did. Had to, right? I think it was something like Dingling. Hammering. My Dingling. <laughs> Get me the dingaling. Get me dingaling one. Uh, Yingwei Malmsteen's The Duck. Yeah. Uh, Billy Gibbons had another guitar called Muddy Wood. Hmm. Eric Clapton's Blackie. Uh, Neil Young's Old Black. William Nelson's Trigger. Stevie Ray Vaughan's Lenny and Number One. Uh, George Harrison had one called Lucy. That's cool. B.B. Uh, King's Lucille. I had to change the name of one of mine because it was... Uh... Mm, shall we say somewhat vulgar? Oh. And the uh, names had to go in the cases, obviously, especially when we were flying. And uh, get me fart knocker. Yeah. Uh, I can't say it here, but it was uh, it was not looked at kindly by uh, airport staff sometimes. Uh -huh. So they're like, "Hey, man, <laughs> change it up." I, no, I I told the crew, I was like, "Can we we got to write something else on this thing? You can't you can't be passing this through." Tony Iommi from uh, Black Sabbath had one called Old Boy. Old Boy. Yeah. Hey, speaking of numbers, Billy Joel's 100th show at Madison Square Garden that was filmed on March 28th will become a two-hour CBS special and will be airing on April 14th. It's called the 100th Billy Joel at Madison Square Garden, the greatest run of all time, and marks his uh, first concert on network TV. And so if you don't have time to watch that on CBS, it will also stream on Paramount+. Plus. And um, Sting appears on stage. I believe Jerry Seinfeld is involved well, in he's this. He's also coming to town so you can see it live. There you go. You know what's weird? Stadium. When, uh, when Hard Rock t took my guitars to, to put them different places, if I remember right, they wouldn't let me, because I wanted to put, like, the name of the guitar and have that on the... Because they, they have the guitar and then they have the little... Um, nameplate? Yeah, like a nameplate. And I wanted the guitar's name on the nameplate, and mm -hmm. I don't think they let me do that. Yeah, so I name. So I wrote it on the guitar. Oh, that's cool. So if you find... There's a... The, the one that was at the St. Louis Hard Rock, which I have no idea where it is now. It was a... Uh, it's a black PRS single cut, and it was named Black Death. That's why I wrote it in silver marker, Black Death. And then this, wow, the one guitar I wish I had back uh, was a silver sparkle, like like full-on glitter sparkle uh, that I called Frog Stomp because it reminded me of Silver Chair. You should have called it Mr. Sparkle. No, no, I called, it, I called it Frog Stomp, Tom. and uh, instead of writing on it, I put in huge green gaff tape all the way across the entire guitar, Frog <laughs> Stomp. I think that's in Orlando or that's someplace. Cool. But yeah, they wouldn't, they wouldn't let me put the name of it down. <laughs> Eminem dropped an album release announcement that started with comments from fans wanting new music. The announcer says in the teaser, the highly anticipated next album goes back to where it all started, Infinite, but now it's even more Infinite. And so, yes, Eminem promoted his 1996 album, Infinite, instead of something new. This was his big April oh, Fool's joke yesterday. Oh, got us. Got us. Got us. Guys, Damn. Art Damn him. <laughs> R. Kelly is putting out a warning bell to all of the people um, in the celebrity realm after Homeland Security raided Diddy's homes last week. During a clubhouse conversation with WAC 100, Kelly made his comments from prison. And he said to the famous people who are laughing at Diddy should be careful because, and I'm going to say this as quoted, they ass could be next, adding... <laughs> That's what's so effed up about it. They so stupid, they don't even realize the moves that's going on. I don't believe none of this ish. You could tell me about Puffy. You could tell me about anybody. You could tell me on the news, the weather, the sky is blue. I'm not going to believe this ish because I'm in it now. And I know what they did, end quote. Who's they? <laughs> um, the Illuminati. I have no idea. He's essentially calling, R. Kelly's calling out the feds and saying people are getting... Um, I took this as he's saying people are getting set up, that none well, of it's real. Like he, like one R. of the Kelly's things I saying, read, what did you read, was that Puffy was working for the feds. Oh, and he's got a lot of dirt, a lot of people. Inside job. The day of reckoning is coming. Whoa. Mm -hmm. and there's going to be names. Well, I think R. Kelly's angle is probably like, <laughs> well, if I don't. If we don't believe Puffy, then maybe my stuff's not yeah. true either. Yeah. Right. Maybe I shouldn't be in here. No, you should probably be in there. Yeah. yeah I think, Robert, <laughs> you're right where you belong. Stay there, Robert. Well, on the Let's Go with Tom 
Brady, Larry Fitzgerald, and Jim Gray podcast. What a weird title of a podcast. Tom Brady asked Snoop Dogg, who, who was the, the highest he's ever been with? And uh, we have some audio here of Snoop's answer. All right, Snoop, who is the highest he's ever been with? He's ever been with. Okay. Snoop, what was the most stoned you've ever been in your whole life? With Willie Nelson. <laughs> We was in Amsterdam on 420, so we went back to his hotel room, and we was playing dominoes. So <laughs> Willie had a vape, a joint, I had a blunt, and he had a pipe. And I'm just getting higher and higher and higher, and he just keep passing it to me, and I'm like trying to stop. But I can't because I don't want to show no signs of weakness. <laughs> Fifteen minutes into the session, I suggest I say, Willie, hey, man, let's get something to eat, man. And we go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? And when they bring the chicken from the drive-thru, they give it to us. And me and Willie both put our hands in the bucket at the same time. <laughs> and we grab the same piece of chicken, Tom. And I look at Willie and I say, it's yours, cuz. <laughs> That's respect right there. Yeah, it man. is. Uh, I'd kill for that memory. Do you think Willie Nelson is like the Yoda of oh, yeah. weed smoking? For sure. Mm -hmm. Casey Musgraves was on Stern getting interviewed, and she said that she smoked with Willie on, on the bus. And weed, man. That she has the, the, um, the roach framed. That's cool. Oh, Isn't that's that cool. cool? I just think that's such a great Who's, memory for her. Yo, if he's, he's the Yoda, of... if he's the Yoda, Snoop's on the council. He's Mace Windu. Oh, yeah. oh for also, sure. Also, what a... Yeah. Oh, Snoop, yeah, definitely he's, Snoop's he's, on the council. He's Mace Windu. He's but, got the but purple about, But what about saber. Tommy Chong? Yeah. Uh, I mean, Tom, there's yeah. the Mount Rushmore of weed, man. Um, yeah, okay. What is, where does Tommy Chong fit in? I'm just impressed that she had the... Seth Rogen seems like a every day, all day. He is an every day, all day He's made it an entrepreneur business, you know? Right, he was one of the first well, so celebrities. Tommy, so, so Tommy, Tommy Chong, you can, Tommy Chong definitely belongs on Here, that. Here's Absolutely. what I say. Here's here's what I like to say. It's like comparing baseball players from 1901 to baseball players of 20 to 2001. Yeah, they were Seth doing it, but. Tommy Chong and but, Willie paved the way for Seth Rogen. Yeah, yeah, not those guys. I'm just saying. I, I'm just saying like Woody you know, Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. The difference, yeah, the difference sure. between the powerfulness, you know, the the intensity of mm -hmm. what Tommy Chong was doing was probably didn't even touch. What Rogan's doing? Bob Marley. Oh, Bob Marley. Marley yeah. yeah, Bob Marley. Definitely on the We're council. Doing Mount Rushmore. That's four right. on the council for would, sure. Okay, so this was a question actually asked before. <laughs> Who would be on the Mount Rushmore of marijuana? <laughs> uh, I like the Jedi Council. Because <laughs> 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 there's more chairs, first of all. Right. Uh, <laughs> I don't think Mount who's Rushmore. Who's a female though? I mean, these are all dudes, and that's great. But are there any females? Yeah, dude. Is it like a dude thing? Do you, do you, I think women probably maybe grow out of it faster. I don't know. Like Chelsea Handler. <laughs> yeah, but she, she she like does it all, right? Is she, yeah, is she she's like But she's 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 like Bill Maher as far as a media personality who promotes being stoned and and has that part of her oh, really? medical realm too. I I think that she yeah, I think she's similar to Bill Maher in that way. Uh who are the weed smokers on Mount Rushmore? <laughs> Uh, Willie Nelson, Soup Dog, Tommy Chong, like we said, which yeah. is crazy. Uh, Mount Rushmore of cannabis legend. Does Cheech not get a an honorable mention? Was he not? I you know mean, who used to what, chief hard? Was he not partaking? And was a Cheech president. was, but I feel like Tommy Chong led the way. Is the guy? Mm. Why he <laughs> stuck with it? Cheech moved on, and like Tommy yeah. Chong stayed. He, he Cheech on moved on to Nash Bridges with uh, with yeah, Don Johnson. Moved hey, on. Dude, he yeah. sold out. Still gone. <laughs> he looked on from. He moved on from the look, but maybe not from the. I don't know. Uh, the the internet says Bob Marley. Yeah, I would yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah. That's a more mm -hmm. spiritual musical. Yeah, I get that. Okay, well, this is some terrible news. I hate this next story. Um, Angie Harmon, who you know from Law and & Order and Agent Cody Banks, she and her family, they did, they did not have a good Easter. Their dog, Ollie, was shot and killed by an Instacart delivery oh. man. Oh, dude, I read this. This is wild. This is nuts. So Harmon shared on Instagram that a man delivered food to her house and then shot their dog, claiming that the dog had attacked him and it was self-defense. Cops showed up. They let this guy go. Uh, but Angie says the driver didn't have a scratch or a bite on him. His pants were not torn. He shot our dog with our daughters and myself at home and just kept saying, yeah, I shot your dog. Yeah, I did. We're completely traumatized and beyond devastated at the loss of our beloved boy and our family member. Insane. Even more insane. It doesn't sound like he's going to get in trouble for it at right. all. Like, they, so they, did the dog attack him? Well, Nobody knows. And the security cameras were 
charging, which is very convenient that they didn't get any of this footage on a celebrity. You know, you would think that they have their property being monitored at all times. Well, yeah, and that's the other thing is, why is this cat carrying a gun necessarily? Uh, I mean, right. to, to do what you want, but like, I'm pretty sure Angie Harmon probably lives in Malibu or Calabasas like or some nice, badass area. Right. I'm not yeah, gonna. I'm not gonna shame the guy over. for carrying a gun. I mean, oh, he's out in. L.A., you know. Okay. I mean, if he's, if he's got a I'm not shaming him for that, but, like, I mean, t to use on a dog, I mean, I've seen the dog. I've, I've seen a picture of the dog. I want to... I haven't seen I'm, a picture of the dog. I don't know what happened, but the, if the dog if the dog is aggressive and... and what a colossal... Biting him. Ah. Wuss, bro. Instacart has suspended the guy and is cooperating with the investigation. Mm. TMZ spoke with the cops. It sounds like they might not be charging him, but still, I mean, Mike, Listen, what, you go top shelf with it? Like, get back wow. in your car. It's a pee move. It's a P move to use a gun on a dog unless you you, unless you better you show danger. that yeah Aww. you better show that some wounds where you felt like right. oh, I can no longer defend myself without weaponry right or against, kicking it or against this medium sized dog, dog. is huge it looked like a mutt it was probably it was a German Shepherd Beagle mix so it, was, it looks like it weighs about twenty pounds yeah it's like or forty less. pounds right. That's four, maybe fifteen forty pound dog you I pee you, now you, if you it's get, a, again I didn't see the picture of the dog so I don't know if it's a giant it's aggressive not a, dog he looks like a sweet that's got his you know teeth sunk into the guy's leg looks like a mutt. Even if it's got your teeth sunk into the leg, like, be a man, man. Get the thing off of you without, a, his without weapons. Come on, man. Yeah, you're how, shooting a dog on how, Easter. How big of a children. wuss can you be, dude? Like, what the hell? I'm, I'm, I didn't see a video, so I gotta, I wanna. I'd be so Last upset. resort. You know, Ooh. as a. As a dog owner, yes. You're at home with your family. You get Instacart delivered. You're in the house. All of a sudden, the Instacart driver kills Cat the dog. Cat the dog is. The best. It's the same size as this dog. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah and I your think children cat's bigger. See it. Cat's bigger than this and one. And the delivery driver doesn't have anything. There's no mud. There's no scratch. I'll tell you what, there'd be one less Instacart driver out there. I'll tell you that. That's Listen, right. It's Fair a, enough. He said it. He, he said it. It's a beagle. You can a mix a beagle, beagle with a rhino, and it's still going to be beagle. It's a beagle. Anyway, and it looks like a beagle. I that hate sucks. that for them. Um, more April Fool's pranks on Wheel of Fortune. Uh, Jared Leto. Took this was very funny, by the way. Yeah, I watched it, the video of this. So here's the, just the audio of this. Jared Leto came out with um, Vanna White and essentially was acting like he was the new host of Wheel he, of Fortune. He did what Pat Sajak does yeah. at the beginning of every wheel. And it's Jared Leto in like a big suit. Yeah, he looks gorgeous. And he does as Pat Sajak does at the top of every show. It's actually very funny. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the stars of our show, Jared Leto and Vanna White. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, have a great show. Yeah. See you soon. All right, everybody, grab those devices. It's time to give away some money. Uh, $1,000 in our first toss-up. The category is on the map. Yeah, I mean, it's like for, for real. His and demeanor did, was great. And they did the whole episode? Uh, did it? No, did Pat Sajak oh. came out. Oh. Well, that's some... Commit to the joke. God. However, I wouldn't mind seeing Jared Leto hosting Wheel of Fortune. And I guarantee you, he wanted to do the whole thing. Right. That's come on, producers. It looked Commit good. to the joke. It did look good. He's gonna pull it off. That man is so gorgeous. He's like uh, Paul Ruddy. Just doesn't age. He looks the same age he did in my so-called life. Damn it. Beautiful. Uh, my it's that adrenochrome he's uh, he's harvesting. Yeah, oh, yeah, you have no idea. He I've been to no his, I've been to his complex. It's the coolest Ugh. place. You I've have ever no been. idea. It's adrenochrome. <laughs> Maya, Look it up. Maya Rudolph went to high school with Jack Black, and he helped get her career started. Here's a little bit of Maya talking on Drew Barrymore's show yesterday about being friends with Jack Black. Yeah, high school. He was two years older than me, and he transferred in 10th grade, and I was in 8th. Our drama teacher, Davida, put us together, and he was my improv coach for, like, an improv competition we did. And he got me into the improv class, and he took me to my first Groundling show, Groundling Theater, which is where I ended up. First of all, you have to understand something about Jack. Jack has been the same person since the day I met him. The exact same person. He's just that guy. He's just special. Mm. I love Jack Black. Special. You guys were arguing uh, last week about the remake of Roadhouse. and Oh, uh, yeah. Rafe saw it. Yeah. And terrible. You, oh. Didn't like it. Riz loved it. <laughs> loved it. I and thought it was loved great, it. man. It was fun. Add right. this to uh, Riz's argument. It is the most watched film debut on Amazon MGM Studios. It drew 50 million viewers in the first two weekends on Amazon Prime. Yeah. So I don't know if the, the 50, mu 50 million viewers, I know everybody was pretty we divided hate watching online. It. Yeah. Did you go in with an open mind? I did go in with an open mind. It was just, uh, it was just really, it was just awful. 
I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal awesome. was decent, but Conor McGregor was, the acting was so uneven. The story made no sense. And look, I'm not asking for a lot. It wasn't like the first Roadhouse was gone with the wind. But my God, man, <laughs> it was like Conor McGregor walked around like this, like a pit bull, smiling yes. the whole movie. Like he never had any kind of emotional tempo yes. change. Yes, okay, yeah, I, I went into The bad guy sucked. It was, okay, the fight scenes were kind of like, they went with weird sound effects to make it sound real. So instead of like your usual like pew, 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 like a movie, it was like these really fleshy sounds that made it feel weird. And the fight scenes look CGI'd. It was just bad. Hmm. Was there anything else on Amazon? I mean, you said it was like the most Amazon. What? what yeah, the I heck? don't think there was anything else that debuted at the same time. <laughs> oh, wow. Huh? I mean, that's, they they're yeah. they were number one the on our platform that we intentionally didn't. <laughs> well, it's like we're it you know anything. we're number one on 105.7 The Point between six and ten a.m. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got it. Hey, you know what else? Uh, uh, I don't. I don't know how it's doing, or if anybody. If maybe you guys have already talked about it, um, it is a Guy Ritchie show on Netflix that we started yesterday called uh, "The Gentleman." I oh, freaking yeah. love it, dude. Really? Uh, I, I, What's I, it about? I, um, bunch of dudes. It's got bunch all the normal things. It's got uh, you know uh, a rich guy that dies and a family that's arguing over the inheritance. Uh -huh. It's got some mystery stuff. It's got uh, drugs. It's Hot got chicks. money. Jason no Statham. Is it only hot? Is Jason dudes? Statham in it? Yeah. Um, is he a beekeeper? No, but no but idea. but the guy what does that Jason Statham look like the guy that's in every Guy Ritchie movie. You know what I'm talking about? The guy from uh, Mean Machine or whatever. Um, what's his name? Uh, uh, you got you know this guy? The soccer player? Yes. David Beckham? No, he no. Two no. Tony? Yes, that guy. The guy is that was the juggernaut in the old X Men. Yes, that guy is in uh, everything. Vinny, uh, Vinny, uh, Vinny, uh, Vinny something, Vinny something, Vinny something. Verdi. No, stop it. Vinny. Whatever it is. <laughs> Jones. Jones. Vinny Jones. Yeah. Vinny Jones. Vinny Jones and Steve. I think you'd like the show, though. I mean, it's it's, <laughs> it's full blown Guy Ritchie. Every oh, episode's like an hour and Are ten minutes. Are there any ladies I, in the movie? I, in the show? I'm going to be honest with you. My opinion of Rainfall Williams just went down a little bit. Why? Because you don't like. <laughs> you, yeah, you said Roadhouse was terrible. Dude. Shots wow. fired. That's one of his. That's what we learned about I'll get sex. over it. Yeah. I'll get over it. There yeah, no, no, no sex. sex at all in this Roadhouse, right. I might add. They did a. They kissed one time, and the Dumb. relationship made no sense. They kissed in the water of the Caribbean and they did a cutaway. I didn't want a love story, Rafe. I didn't want a love story either. That's I wanted some standing up against the wall. Right. It wasn't sexual love, dude. healing it was like Patrick Swayze was handing out. Oh, it no just, mullets either. I'm very upset. It was just was. It was really dumb. It was really You're bad dumb. and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> there was a point in the final fight scene. Well, that uh, was just a regular spoiler alert. Ebert right there. Yes, yeah. it was. That was awesome. You're dumb. You're dumb. Yeah. Wow. Well, you're dumb. <laughs> really Here's bad. Here's how dumb and it dumb. was. He was <laughs> seventh graders. They were trying like, wow. to kill each other. Like literally trying to kill him. It wasn't like a, a bar fight. The guy's trying to kill him and he like smashes his head against a piano and out of nowhere he's just like, This piano's out of tune. <laughs> It's like corny, like it'd be serious, and it'd be. It was like the tone was so off. Then Jillian Hall would just have like a corny joke while he's like literally trying. Someone's trying to stab him. And let's put it this way: first five minutes of the movie, Post Malone is one of the fighters. Was not. I love Post Malone, dude. But like that was not a little doughy role. A little doughy, out a little of, corny. Out of lane. Out of lane. Well, he's really he's played. In two different movies I've seen so far. He's been a prisoner in two different ones, exactly. and he's a great inmate. But as he's supposed to be the strong here, boxer, right? it doesn't quite oh. okay. match it. Wow. It's terrible. Hey, you got you're wrong, so. Hey, guys. Wrong, so. Um, Martin Short is going to be the next mayor of a little town in Southern California called Funner. He's going to be inaugurated on May 13th. And he says, quote, as the mayor-elect of Funner, I promise to be more than just a spokesperson dressed in purple from head to toe, but instead the best mayor in the whole darn state. This is all part of Funner's governing body. Um, they do this from time to time where they'll take celebrities like past mayors include Jane Lynch, Rob Riggle, uh, David Hasselhoff, and he will you be... Any, does he wield any power? He does. Um, you know, he will work on the city council. And Harrah's Casino essentially sponsors this whole little town, so... Did he have to run for office, or no, I think they just told him he was going to be the mayor. Place it's located in North uh, North San Diego County. He promises to protect fun, good times, laughing out loud, and positive vibes from the negative influences determined to turn a oh. smile upside down. Okay. End quote. So congratulations, um, Andrew Garfield, 
who was Spider-Man, right? Andrew yep. Garfield, mm -hmm. uh, his previous girlfriends include Emma Stone. Well, now his new girlfriend is Dr. Kate Thomas, and she calls herself a professional witch. On her website, she says that she teaches a combination of ancient and modern spiritual practices and rituals, helps her students explore the world of energy, astrology, and spiritual practice. And she even has this testimonial from Megan Mullally, who said that she's a great tarot card reader. So congratulations. Right. They were spotted out with Bo Burnham and Phoebe Bridgers out on a double date. And finally, studyfinds.org researched nine expert sources to rank the seven best child actors of all time. Give it to me. Ranked. Ranked. Macaulay Culkin, number one, lock it in. Nope. Number three, <laughs> Corey Feldman. Shirley Temple. Not on the top seven, That's Corey insane. Feldman. It is insane. Uh, Shirley, Shirley Temple. Temple. Shirley Temple, number one. Yeah. 10,000 points for Moon. Thank you. Shirley Temple. I win. Lot. So who's number two? Gary Coleman. Gary Coleman not on the top oh. seven. Ralph, uh, Ralphie, uh, shoot, what's his name? Uh, From the Christmas story? Yeah, yeah, what's yeah. his name? Peter, Peter Billingsley. Billingsley. Peter, Peter Billingsley. Billingsley, yeah, yeah. Not on the list. Okay. Ooh. What about Spanky from The Little Rascals? No. Uh, he should be on there. Somebody from Newsies. Oh, Christian, Christian Bale. Bale. Christian Bale's number six. Elijah Wood. No. Yeah. Dude. Uh, Ron Howard. In the it. same vein as Elijah Wood, though. Macaulay? No, we already said that. Same well, vein. Good one, though, is Ron Howard. Ron Howard. Oh, no. Joel, Joel Osmond. Um, Haley, Haley Joel, Joel Osmond, Osmond. Haley Joel number Osmond. seven. Dude. Uh, uh, what? Elijah Wood didn't get the credit he deserved on some of the movies. Not not just The Good Son and some of the other ones, but like uh, the one with the radio flyer. And, North. Uh, I mean, he was making yeah, he, was North, he was making all these movies where you're like, damn, this kid is carrying every aspect yeah. of these films. Yeah, he, he's... Good actors. Uh, and we all know these people. Oh, yeah. Oh, the gal, uh, Veep and uh, and um, uh, Vega. Uh, oh, um... My girl. My yeah, girl, thank she's you. she's not on the list. I know who you're talking about, but no. Uh, oh, who's the girl in Little Miss Sunshine? What's her name? She's Abigail great. Breslin? Abigail yeah. Breslin. Not on the list. Wow. wow. Are you going to say uh, so old St. Louis gal? No. Nope. The Olsen yeah. twins. Oh, wait. No. Oh, this list is what erroneous. Why can't the, I think the three, of the names? three last uh, are, are girls. Dustin Diamond. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, think classic actors from iconic movies. Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster, number wow. four. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. okay. Did we get number two? No. And you know, number two, iconic, died way too young. Oh, 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 uh, Dorothy um, Phoenix. Uh, yeah. Judy Garland, Judy Garland. Uh, is number two, uh, and then the final one, number five, Dakota Fanning. So to round out the list, uh, Haley Joel Osment, Christian Bale, Dakota Fanning, Jodie Foster, Macaulay Culkin, uh, Judy Garland, and Shirley Temple. No offense to Christian Bale, but Elijah Wood should be the replacement. Yeah, I don't for that. feel like yeah. Yeah, I mean, I Christian think... Bale became a great actor, but I don't feel like he was. I never even thought of him Same. as a child actor. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, maybe you didn't know he was in some of that stuff. Remember, he was in uh, Fien um, the uh, How's the Ri How's the Rising Sun. What was the Sun one? Um, I think you're. Is it How's uh, the Rising Sun? I what is that, that movie? Elijah Wood was in like nine. It's like a Vietnam one or World yeah. War Two one. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, really? Oh, dude, I think it was his debut. He was amazing. Oh, uh, it's good birthdays. Celebrity. Oh, by the way, Emma Stone. I saw. Uh, we, we, we watched about half Empire, the, uh, Empire of the Sun. Of the Sun. Uh, we watched about half of that. Uh, Four things. Yeah. What'd you think? I'm not sure yet. I, I loved it, but it was super weird. Okay. Yeah, we're about halfway through, and it was a weird. Lots place of to Joeing stop. in that movie. Joeing. I haven't oh, seen it enjoying yet. Oh, oh, oh okay. Celebrity <laughs> celebrating a birthday today, Lee DeWise. Anybody know who that is? American Idol DeWise, winner. American Idol, Season yes. nine. He's 38. Bethany Joey Lenz. That's Haley on One Tree Hill. Uh, she wrote uh, Halo, one of her hits from the show. She was an American Idol judge. She's uh, 43. By the way, One Tree Hill, never seen it, but I still get royalties like $43 every quarter. Because we Sweet. We were, yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh, Bobby Bones is 44 from Dancing the Star Dancing with the Stars and American Idol. Jesse Carmichael's 45. That's uh, Maroon 5's keyboard player. Michael Fassbender, Magneto. Also rumors of... Uh, the biggest dong in Hollywood. That's right. He's 47. Pedro Pascal, 49. Gray, uh, Clark Gregg, two first names. That's Phil Coulson on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You know this guy. He's an MCU all over the place. Yeah. Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Thor, Avengers. He's 62. Billy Dean, two first names. Is 62. Who's Billy Dean? Country singer and Star Search winner. Billy Dean. Billy Dean. Is you know Billy a, Dean? Yeah. Is that uh, 90s brown hair mullet song? Paula called Dean's brother. Billy the mm -hmm. Kid and uh, pretty on the nose. And Karen Woodward from Bananarama is 63. Christopher Maloney. 
You guys know this guy? He's oh, Detective yeah. Stabler on Law & Order SVU. Yeah, that's freak show, right? This is the guy who's like... Well, he's 63 today, and he looks like he's 40 something still. He is just like ripped out yeah, of his head. This is the guy out of his head. the zaddy. Yeah, he's ripped out I of his hate, head. I hate that word. He's got zaddy? this big. Yeah. He's got this big muscle butt, and I always think that this was Casey uh, Casey Jones from the Turtles, it's and it's not, not the same guy. No, he was Those in the Oz. Those are good. He was in Oz. Yeah, the, uh, he's freak show in Harold and Kumar, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's 63. Amy Lou Harris is 77. And Linda Hunt, that's Hetty, the uh, tiny boss from uh, NCIS Los Angeles. You know her from Kindergarten Cop, uh, Pocahontas. This is another gal who, once you see her, you go, oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah. Linda Hunt. She is. Lydia. Oh, sorry. No, no, Linda. Oh, born, I got born Lydia. I guess she goes by Linda. Yep. Linda Hunt is 79 years old. All right. Today's Porno Birthday, which is being brought to you by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet is Paige Delight. And today's birthday girl's been in 94 fine films, including Bad Girls Pay the Piper, Cleavage and Clams, Fiery Redheads, Hot Cars and Hot Babes, yeah. a movie called Jiggling Jugs, hmm. Mammary Magic, Savor Her Naked Knockerhood. Does she have huge knockers? Because it sounds like she does. I am assuming. <laughs> and who could forget her role in 2012's The Nipple Festival? Oh. oh. <laughs> they have that every year. Every year. <laughs> Festival. It travels. It's, it's right it after goes the around. testicle festival. Yes, it is. <laughs> around. Remember Wentzville hosted it that one year? Yeah. I do. It was pretty cool. They it called great. it Tensville. What? No. What? There's a testival? <laughs> Man, if there was a testival. Uh, Paige Delight is uh, 37 years old. It's your porno birthday. Those are your crappy birthdays, and that was your crap on celebrities. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back, and uh, we'll play, and people have been asking for it. Match up with Moon. Yeah. All right, so uh, we'll get some people on the phone, 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. Uh, King Scott will ask uh, Moon and myself five questions. Whoever gets the most questions right, our respective teammates on the phone, will win their choice of prizes. We have uh, Rob Zombie, Alice Cooper tickets for their show September 1st at the Hollywood Casino Amphitheater with Ministry and Filter. We got tickets to the Just Announced Smashing Pumpkin show August 21st at the Amphitheater. And we have tickets for the Sold Out Palais Royale show this Thursday over at the Duck Room. All right, Team Riz, Team Moon, 314-624-3833, 618-398-3833. Match up at Moon next. It's 810. It is Tuesday. Traffic and weather. Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Confluence Music Festival with Ludacris, Riley Green, and more, and the NASCAR Cup Series, June 1st and June 2nd. Tickets are available now at WWTRaceway.com. We have so much traffic. There's, everything is a mess. A roadblock due to a vehicle fire, 170 southbound at 70. Uh, on 70, we have a lane block due to debris, 70 eastbound at uh, Riverview Boulevard. On 40, there's a whole bunch of trouble and delays, uh, 64 eastbound between 40 Drive and Bellevue. And there's some more trouble west of that. And severe delays, 270 eastbound between 255 and Big Ben. Average speed about 15 miles an hour. There's lanes blocked and all sorts of stuff on 44 there as well. Your point forecast, flood potential on some roads. Temperatures are falling today. Windy and a high of 60. Right, right now it's 59 at the Point Studio. Of hey, uh, there's a forum on Reddit called uh, No Stupid Questions. I don't, I don't think this is a stupid question, actually. Some guy uh, wanted to know what percentage of the Earth's population had been within 10 feet of a cow. Uh-huh. That's a great question. Hey, what do you mean by no stupid questions? That can mean anything. <laughs> does that mean there are no stupid questions here? Or does that mean... No, no stupid, stupid questions. questions. Uh, <laughs> right. What does it mean? Uh, I think it's... No! I, I think it's a play on like, there's no stupid questions. Right. That's what I think yeah. it is. Okay. So he started the post with, quote, I told my girlfriend that I've never been within 10 feet of a cow. And she said I was weird. Um, I don't think it's a ridiculous question um, as far as what percentage of the Earth's population has been within 10 feet of a cow. And I believe all of us here have, right? Of course. Yep. Love cows. Does TV count? No. You've been within 10 feet oh, of a cow. Yeah. I have. Um, I love a but good heifer. although, I think if I were to ask my brother, he's <laughs> never been. Really? It's unfortunate. Cows are great. I don't think my brother has been within 10 feet of a cow. Bummer. 
he would have no reason to be. Why would he be within 10 feet of a cow? Certainly now we're talking about a live cow. We're talking about living cows. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, it's not a steak on your plate. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> a living, a living, breathing cow. Mm hmm Hmm. So, yeah, the poll had one simple question. So this guy and, and 12,000 people weighed in on this poll. The question was, have you ever been within 10 feet of a cow? And then it said live cows, beef does not count. Mm -hmm. Now, of the 12,000 people, what percentage do you think it was? Yes or no? I think 80% have been within 10 feet of a cow. 80% yes, so 20% no. Where did they, where did they uh, ask these people? All over. This was on, this was on Reddit, so it's from everywhere. 71% mm -hmm. yes. 71% yes. 29% well, said no. I'm going to say a lot of folks have not got to experience much in their lives and they're pretty boring, so I'm going to go 60. So 60% yes have been within 10 feet yes. or 60% have not? Um, I think have not, right? Have not? Yeah. 60% have not. Have not. Yes. Rafe, wow. what do you think? Mm. I could see this being a shocker where it's like 50-50 because I think it's going to be higher. But I grew up, I think we take that for granted because of where we grew up. Right. Because there are continents where there aren't cows. Sure. So I'm going to go, I'll say 50-50. 50-50. Now, mind you, had I not moved out here, maybe I never would have been within 10 feet of a cow. Yeah, but you got to assume that everybody not in a city probably has. And then a lot of people in the city probably have at some point. It was 90.2% 90, 90, 90 have been within 10 90. feet. Oh, okay. 90. 90. I thought it was going to be the total opposite. 90.2% of people say they have, they've been super close to a cow before. Yeah. Most were surprised by this answer. Um, it actually turns out maybe you should not be that close after all, because in other recent news, a man in Texas just contacted uh, or, uh, just contacted the um, the bird flu or <laughs> contracted it. Contacted because it. Of emailed it. the bird flu. Yeah, hello, mm -hmm. the bird flu. <laughs> What's up? From cows. Uh, contracted it. Yeah, contracted. <laughs> bird flu, you up? <laughs> contracted the bird flu, which came because of close contact with cows. Hmm, that really? makes sense. What an aptly named flu. Mm -hmm. Hey. Um, you think you get mad cow disease. From, they, they you thought, actually get that from pigeons. They thought Crazy, I had, huh? They had, the, they thought I had the bird flu in Australia. It was what? Oh, Why? Because you were just so ill? I, I was so sick. I had, so ill. I had such, so Ill. No. such a temperature. I had such a fever that I couldn't see and I couldn't move and I couldn't get out of my room and everybody was drinking and partying somewhere else mm -hmm. and I, when I finally could see, I crawled to the elevator, crawled to a cab, crawled to a Hooped hospital. on that cab's windshield. And I had a 45 yep. <laughs> degree temperature, which in Celsius is like 104 point something, oh 104.9 and that's when I felt better. Damn. And they're like, we, they rushed me back, put me in an ice bath, they thought I had bird flu. This is like when bird flu was like So there. hot. So, so hot, so right hot man. Mm -hmm. I wonder what the percentage of people who have seen a whale is. Uh, I have seen that. a whale. That's... Like out in the wild. I have seen. We, uh, the wife and I, we were dating, went on a whale watching trip. That's cool. I'm a whale watcher. <laughs> I'm a whale watcher. It, you know what? Breathtaking. I bet. Was it? Oh. What kind of whale? I want to do Whatever that. Whatever are, are off the coast of Rhode Island. Also, the so oh, breathtaking didn't I even wasn't paying make that note of it. Attention. Man, I bet you that's I'd be I bet you that's under fifteen percent. I bet that's got to be pretty pretty low. Because you got to have the money to get out there, and then the opportunity to, when you're out yeah. there to see humpback. One. I don't know. I don't know. All I've right, I've seen yeah, grays, and that's all. I've only seen grays. Humpback well, I don't know. Cool. I've seen killer. We went out on a boat. Yeah, we, I've seen the, that counts, right? The or are they technically dolphins? It was it was the late nineties. Who knows? Mm. No, yeah, does that count? Mm. I think so, right? An orca. Yeah, of course. Because if you've been to any place where they got them tanked, now you've seen a whale. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Oh, I'm not saying okay. that, Okay, so if you went to SeaWorld, if wow. An if an orca yeah. counts, I'm just saying, ah. that's going to skew a your numbers. A whale out in the wild. Mm -hmm. A wild yeah. whale. I haven't seen a wild. A wild whale. Yeah, I've seen one on the way to Catalina. There was a group that started following us. The Catalina wine awesome. mixer? Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. cool. It yeah. followed you? Wow. Yeah, it was on Guys. the boat, and the captain even, he like slowed down so everyone would go take a peek. Guys, we got work to do. I'm sorry. Yes. 
Enough blubbering around, huh? Right. Whales, guys? Ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. Time to play Match Up with Moon. <laughs> um, been a hot minute since we played the game. People are like, where's Match Up with Moon? Well, here it is. So King Scott's going to ask us five questions each. Uh, during the break, we decide that I'll be answering the questions first. Moon will go into isolation first. Whoever gets the most questions right, our respective teammates on the phone will win their choice of prizes. We have Rob Zombie, Alice Cooper, Ministry and Filter tickets, September 1st, Hollywood Casino Amphitheater. That's a, that's a hell of a show there. Uh, Smashing Pumpkins just announced a big summer show August 21st at the Amphitheater. And we have tickets to go see Palais Royale, sold out Thursday over at the Duck Room at Blueberry Hill. All right, let's get our teammates. Uh, Travis in Greenville. Hello, Travis. Hey, how are you doing, Riz? So far, so good. All right, Team Riz, Team Moon. How are you feeling today? I feel great. Well, then I'm going to go with you. All right, Travis, you and I, buddy. Hang on. Uh, Eric, you are Team Moon. Yeah, dude. All right. Sounds good. Let's go, Moon. All right. All right, buddy. Here we go. All right, let's put Moon in isolation. Good luck, guys. Uh, good with the questions? Oh, yeah. There's not going to be any controversy. Scott? There should not be. I double-checked a couple of them. It looks good. You double-checked a couple mm -hmm. of them? I went on, uh, yeah. I went on to Yoohoo and searched, and we'll see how it goes. As, you know, Rafe knows, uh, you know, somebody who comes up with some of these trivia questions for these, you know, ratio on-air games. Mm -hmm. Never fails. Never no, fails no, for somebody to bitch one. about something. Yeah. All right, here we go. Riz, yep. how many arms does a starfish have? Five. You're toast already. Shut the face. <laughs> Which fruit does SpongeBob live in? A uh, pineapple. Which U.S. state capital is the largest by population? U.S. state capital largest by population. Great question. Thank you, Scott. Wow. Um, largest state capital. Austin. What is the name of the pet dinosaur on the Flintstones? Uh, Dino. Which branch of the which branch of the U.S. Armed Forces use the slogan? It's not just a job; it's an adventure. Uh, the Navy. And your tiebreaker. In meters, how tall is Mount Denali? Uh, three thousand. Okay. Wow. All right, Moon. How'd you do? Uh, I. I <laughs> 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 yeah. You know. That yeah, tough, huh? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Good for you, Scott. For, yeah. Thank you. They're getting him. All right. Give me some music. Oh, man. I forgot that there's drama music. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's serious. Okay, go ahead. All right, Eric. How many... Uh, no, my name is... Well, uh, for Eric, sorry. Okay. How many arms... Hi, Scott. Hi. How many arms does a starfish have? Ooh. That's... I'm going to guess five. Which fruit does SpongeBob live in? And they're called sea stars because they're not fish. Thank you. I call them food. What'd you say now? Uh, which fruit does SpongeBob live in? Uh, pineapple under the sea. Which U.S. state capital is the largest by population? Whoa. This has got to be some sort of obvious thing, right? Largest by population? Man, I'm going through all the big ones. I mean... I mean, oh my gosh, dude. If you don't think of it right away or you don't know it, it's probably not it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh man, this isn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man, oh, this is not man. fun at all. Um, hell, I don't have a clue, man. I guess I'll say... Uh, what is, I don't even know what, what the capital of some of these states are. I know, right? What's, what's the capital of Massachusetts? Springfield. I don't know. Springfield, Massachusetts? We're bad at, no, it's not. It's, <laughs> you probably are right. Is it, I don't know. I'm going to say Boston. It, 
I don't. That's not a capital, is it? I don't. <laughs> I don't freaking know. Salem. Man. Salem, <laughs> Massachusetts. Damn, that sounds right too. Why Salem? am I helping? I don't. Know. Yeah, I don't know. You can't do that. <laughs> okay, you can't do that. I'm gonna change it to Sacramento. Okay. That's not very big, though. What is the name of the pet dinosaur on Flintstones? Dino. Which branch of the U.S. Army? Uh, sorry, which branch of the U.S. Armed Forces used the slogan, it's not just a job, it's an adventure? Oh, that's the Navy. All right, here's your tiebreaker. In meters, how tall is Mount Denali? Mm -hmm. uh, 13,500. Hey, I'm going to go back. It's, 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 what'd you say? Did he say something? It's music. Oh. I got it. It's fine. Okay. okay. Um, could go back to the one right before that. Was it's not just a job; it's an adventure. Yeah, it's not just a job, but it's an adventure. Man, that might be something like the Coast Guard. It's not just a job; it's an adventure. Man, that sounds like the Coast Guard, but I'm gonna stick with the Navy. Can I go back to number six? What did you say, meters wise? Uh, I, th I think I 13, said thirteen thousand five hundred. Is that it? Yeah. All right, man. All right. Whew. Tough stuff. Wow. What the hell took you so long on that? S What's some of the you, answers. What, that? what is Why wrong can't with you? Why you just, like, just roll? <laughs> we, I, I went through two and a half songs. <laughs> you did not. You went through one song, and it was two minutes. Those are Ramones songs. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at it, you punk. God. <laughs> <laughs> you either know it or you don't. Oh. First of all, we had greetings to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Pleasantries. Just stop get getting off stuff. Of me. So and you're right, the weather is wild. Get <laughs> off of me. Butt hurt. It gets wow. so butt hurt, doesn't it? <laughs> all right, you're guys. So mean. <laughs> uh, I'm playing for Travis. Man. It's Moon and Eric. So bummed. Let's get the answers. All right. Let's go. So, Match up with Moon. So bummed. How many arms does a starfish have? Riz said five. Moon said five. And the answer yeah. is Seven. five. Yeah. All right. Do we know our starfish? Yeah, thank you. Do. We're, not We're known starfish. for our starfish All right. knowledge. Yeah. Sea stars. Yeah. That's <laughs> what I said about getting an email. As soon as he said starfish, I go, well, you're done. Oh, really? So like, Naturally. And then you did it. <laughs> and then I did it? Yeah. Oh, you did? I did. Wait. Wait. You guys said that? We were talking when you had the headphones in about... Designing games, how uh, people will find something to correct you about. Yeah, right, and right. as soon as he said the first question, I go, well, you're done. What? Uh, and what then is the controversy said, about arms on a starfish? It's fish. like a koala bear. It's not a bear. It's a koala. A starfish is not a fish. It's a, it's a sea star. Oh. Like different classifications. I do like sea star. I think yeah. that's it's cute. Much cute. No, actually. <laughs> <laughs> actually. 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 Check out my chocolate sea star. <laughs> one, <laughs> one one. Which fruit does SpongeBob live in? Uh, Riz said pineapple. Moon said pineapple. And the answer is pineapple. Okay. Yeah, baby. Two to two. Which U.S. state is the largest by population? Boy, this was state this capital. was a thinker. State capital. capital. What, well, what capital? Oh, sorry. Which U.S. state capital is the largest by population? Thank you. Riz said Austin. Austin. Moon yeah, said that Sacramento. Sounds, that sounds right. And the answer is Phoenix. Oh, Phoenix. Man. Kind of a big I deal. Thought you had, I think Boston is Massachusetts state capital, right? Is it really? I don't know. I thought no, you had it with Boston. But it's a um, Hey, Mr. Northeast. Uh, what what what's what's Massachusetts? No uh, it is I don't know, it's Boston. No. <laughs> it is uh If you thought it was Boston, capital why you, Massachusetts. Why don't you yeah. say Boston? She said Salem and that sounded right. No. What's and then capital she said Massachusetts? Springfield and that sounded right. Salem? Salem? No. No. Oh, well, it is, uh, is it some of the capital of my heart. Let's see here. It's really some... You got it? Right for what? I got it. Boston, it. Massachusetts. Oh. It is Boston. Holy and crap. What's the, and what's the, what's the population of Boston versus The population Phoenix? is 650,706 as of 2022. Of Boston? And what is the, what is the population of Phoenix? Eight uh, much, billion. Much bigger than Eight that. Billion. Yeah. Eight billion. Eight billion is the planet. Pretty wide gap. Phoenix is, is higher populated than Boston? Eight billion yeah. is the planet. I think Phoenix like is that whole Phoenix city. area is like Tempe and all those. There's, that's the only city in Arizona. I think the city that's itself is about two okay. point something million. I'm, I'm working for you, buddy. Phoenix is sprawled. Yeah. Yeah, 1.61 1. 1. 1 million in As Phoenix. As opposed to okay. Boston. Okay. 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 That was a tough one. Okay. That was a good question there, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What is the name of the pet dinosaur on the Flintstones? Riz and Moon both said Dino. Damn it. And you're both correct. It's Dino. I may have had you on that one. Three to three. Yeah. I forgot that. 
Which branch is of it, the... Now, what question number is this? Wait, this what was it? What was it? Uh, five. Ooh, we're tied, aren't we? Yep. We are tied. Ooh. Three to three. Okay. Yeah, Comes this is number this. five. I don't remember this. Does it, well, no, we have two more. Wait, this is question number five. No, well, and, there's and a, the tiebreaker. Yeah, tiebreaker. Oh. Okay, Scott, let's go. Which branch of the U.S. Armed Forces used the slogan, it's not just a job, it's an adventure? Riz said Navy. Moon said Navy. Oh, damn it. And the answer is the Navy. Yeah. All right. Okay. Simon almost changed it. Ooh. All right, so it comes out of the tiebreaker. Oh, no. Comes this out of the tiebreaker. Here we what go. everyone loves. <laughs> what did we you love say? The you, you said Denali, too? Yeah. I went over. I think I went over. <laughs> In meters, how tall is Mount Denali? Scott Rizzuto said 3,000 meters. Moon Valjean said 13,500 meters. Okay. Oh, it's like six. Wait, is this without going over? <laughs> Uh, no, close, it's, just it's, closest, it's, it's just closest. Yeah, yeah. Ain't no prices just right. closest. Oh. And the answer is 6,190 meters. So somebody, crap. for God's sake, somebody do the math. It's you. It's you. You're, you're right. only three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For God's sake. Right. Oh, Tiebreaker. Sorry, Eric. I knew you guys knew in feet, so I decided to go meters. Uh, let me congratulate Travis for a second here. Travis. <laughs> Travis, we did it, buddy. That a boy. You I had faith in him. You backed the right horse. You backed the right <laughs> Thanks, horse. Rib. All right. Hang on one second. You win. That's my boy, Travis. Dang. Flip a coin. <laughs> Congrats, Travis. <laughs> Flip a coin. Phoenix, that's it. Kurt, hello. I wouldn't remember. Morning. All right, Kurt, pick somebody. Moon or myself. Oh, man. It's tough. It's yeah, tough. It is. Um, you're on a roll, so. I am. Um, <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> moon, don't you let me Damn down. It. All right, man, I'll try. I'm, I'm, I'm so you going with Moon? I mean, I think we're pretty evenly matched. We've, I think we've discovered this. These All last right, couple so years Kurt ago. is going with Moon. I know, he just beat you. Sometimes yeah. it's, well, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. I'm not intimidated. Uh, Josiah, you are with me, okay? It happens. Yeah. You feel good. I feel All good right. today. All right, hang on. Right. Yeah, you should. I mean, you went on a tiebreaker. Oh, shut your face. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, you're getting up in that head. Oh, 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 Somebody's ready to cry on <laughs> you got me, okay? Triggered. Let's go. Moon. What is no, this? No time for niceties. What does Mario jump on after completing a level? Flagpole. An octagon is an eight-sided polygon. What's the name of a three-sided polygon? Triangle. Which country hosted the Summer Olympics in 2020? Too far. <laughs> Why are you laughing, you jerk? The Summer Olympics? God, dude, why do I not know? Uh, <laughs> why are you laughing? Did you, is this a repeater or no, something? I don't know. These are those annoying ones that we've talked about eight million times and yet. <laughs> I, I just can't keep the years apart. Um, does he know how loud this music is? God. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. Look how peaceful it is. 2020. Well, it wasn't London. Um, was it Tokyo? I'm not just going to say Tokyo. I have no better guess. For what movie did Tom Hanks score his first Academy Award nomination? Uh, do it one more time. Oh, my God. For what movie did Tom Hanks score his first Academy Award nomination? <laughs> Nominations to not win. Oh, dude. This music's stupid, so right? Loud. This is so dumb. Wait, He's doing this on purpose. Wait, are we on question number four? Make sure that he yeah. has this this loud for him. Uh, the nomination, I'm going to say Saving Private Ryan, but I'm sure it came well before that. No, Philadelphia. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm All right, number, so loud, number five here. What TV show was Jack Nicholson referencing when he ad libbed Here's Johnny in The Shining? Uh, we'll say uh, The Tonight Show, Johnny Carson. <laughs> and for the tiebreaker, what year was the first Academy Awards? Oh, man. 1930. All right. Oh, I'm, I'm up. You're up. And for the scene. love of God, and, turn this music And this music down. has to be this, this loud for so you. so loud. Oh, is it, is it loud? No, that, what are you doing? Put it back up. <laughs> 
Yeah, you another have to notch, do it. Another notch. I've seen it. You I've have to it. do it with it the It's right there. Why? Why don't you tell me? I'm, I got headphones on. Because we're playing a game, and I don't want to waste any time here. Heaven forbid. Uh, no, seriously. If you can't, if the music was too loud, you got to tell me. I'm in isolation. You... Oh, man. <laughs> All you guys today. What? Oh, boy. I barely spoke during this entire game. We are not even mentioned about it. Just turn it up. I saw you turn it down again. yell at us. Yeah. I see you turn it down again. I've been eating Tostitos in the corner. Moon. Put it back up. I'm going to put it where I want to put it. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Woo exactly. All right. Look at the... That's on you for not sweater. telling me the music. I can't, I can't. obviously can't hear yeah. what's going on. Can't get right. <sighs> oh, so this is going to be a thing? Right. Oh, man. <laughs> Everything is a thing with you. Well, if the music's too loud, somebody tell me, turn down the music. <laughs> hey, man, it sounds fine to me. Let's, let's yeah, roll. It was good. I it we can't good. run the board. I know I can't either. I got my headphones on. But if we tell you what to do with the board, you're going to yell at us. No, I'm not. Do you're I, yelling I, I right can't. now. You're yelling right now. I'm out of here. Oh, no. No. <laughs> we got to finish this game. All right. I'm going in isolation now. I want no yeah. problem. Just remember, when you're isolated from us, we're isolated from you. Oh, thank you. It's true. I'm going to hate answer these questions. Go. All right. What does Mario jump on after completing a level? He jumps on a flagpole. <laughs> <laughs> an octagon is an eight-sided polygon. What's the name of a three-sided polygon? A triangle. Which country hosted the Summer Olympics in 20, uh, 2020? 2020? Yeah. <laughs> he keeps staring so hard at him, he's getting scared. 2020 was... Uh, nobody knows this. <laughs> 2020 Olympics. That was... Uh, Beijing. For what movie did Tom... Oh. So China? China. <clears throat> what country, you said? Yeah. Country. Chaney. Okay. Did you say China? <laughs> China. 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 answer that. China. Very hate China. China. Oh, um, man. I'm having deja vu right now on China. the radio. <laughs> wow. For what movie did Tom Hanks score his first Academy Award nomination? Nomination. Yes. Nomination. Uh, nomination. Nomination. Philadelphia. Oh. This Ooh. is new. <laughs> <laughs> Bachelor party. All right. What TV show was Jack Nicholson referencing when he ad-libbed, Here's Johnny in The Shining? That's The Tonight Show. And the tiebreaker. What year was the first Academy Awards? 19... Uh... Uh, 32. Okay. Okay. Wow. Mm. Boy, you guys sure did not seem to have as much fun as we did. I've on calmed our down. Round. I calmed down a little bit. <laughs> Everybody was got scared. I had a bit of a meltdown, but we're okay. <laughs> you're, you're, you're weird. You're okay. rebounded. You're, you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I wear that pretty proudly. All right. Here we go. The answers. Let's get them. I'm playing for uh, Josiah. And Kurt mistakenly picked Moon. Ooh. Sorry to hear that. Here we go. What does Mario jump on after completing a level? Uh, Moon said flagpole, as did Riz. I said it in a more yeah, hateful way. Then it's you a did. flagpole. You, you hate it. <laughs> he didn't even confirm. <laughs> he said a flagpole. <laughs> you dinged it. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's a flagpole. Yeah, it just confirmed when he dinged he's it. That, he's that confident. Yeah, of course. One, one. An octagon is an eight-sided polygon. What's the name of a three-sided polygon? Both of the guys said triangle. And the correct answer is... Triangle. Yeah, buddy. Way to go. Triagon. 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 See? That was um, a trick question. <clears throat> Man, he's being sneaky Plus. today, isn't he? Well, I'm sorry. Plus. Which country hosted the Summer Olympics in 2020? Uh, Moon said Japan, and Riz said China. Man, I think it's Japan. Damn no, it. China did uh, winter. Remember? Because it was like hardly yeah, snow. Yeah, you know, thinking about it. Uh, God. All right. And the correct answer is Japan. Damn it. <laughs> Yes! Three to two, Moon in the lead. <laughs> this is question four. Yep. Yep. Damn it. For what movie did Tom Hanks score his first oh, Academy we've Award had this nomination? One before, and I think he gets this every time. No, I don't. what I'm mugging him. I don't know about this one. Moon said Philadelphia, as did Riz. Oh, yes. And the, and the correct answer is big. No. Oh, <laughs> what? what? I, I need Idiots. <laughs> and, and I'm an idiot, and I, I was thinking big, and Zoltan. I said Philadelphia. And, Same kind of uh, movie. Yeah. I said Saving Private Ryan, which is like 98. <laughs> yeah. I think he got his first win with Philadelphia. Oh, I think it? you're right. Whatever, man. 
Yeah. Well, it comes down to this question number five. Uh, if I get this right, then we move on to the tiebreaker. If Moon gets it right, or we both get it wrong. What was this question? And this. Uh, congratulations, uh, Kurt. What TV show was Jack Nicholson referencing oh, when he had lived? Here's Johnny in The Shining. Moon said The Tonight Show, oh, as did God, Riz. And that is show. the correct answer. All right. Can we do number six, though? Because I'm curious. Yeah, about the that. tiebreaker. Well, let's congratulate. On a solid win. Let's congratulate I did not let Kurt. you down. Kurt, you on. Congrats. <laughs> Five Don't points. So excited. <laughs> right on. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> you know what, dude? You should have left that music turned up. See what happened? Ooh. Yeah, man. Yeah. Might have helped. I'm just saying. Might have made you think Japan. Instead of the music or big, bigger. I, I really the music I, is big. That's on me. This one. Yes. Yeah. This hmm. one's on me. I knew the answers. I sorry, Kurt. You said. Oh no, sorry, Josiah. Trisket. <laughs> and then the tiebreaker. What year was the first Academy Awards? Moon said 1930. Riz said 1932. Ooh, no. whoa, man, I know. Whoa. Uh, and the answer. 1929. Oh. Whoa. Yeah, Ooh. nice work, guys. All right, move it on anyway. Ooh, I'm on fire. Man. Good you're going to be on fire. <laughs> hey, you guys are really good. <laughs> you're on fire. You're going to be on fire What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> you're going to be on fire. Everything's good. Everything's great. We split it. We split the points. Everybody's happy. It was great. <laughs> what a great Josiah's time. Josiah's not happy. Good questions. Oh, uh, sorry, Josiah. Good, good, he had fun. But Travis is happy. Your other Travis friend. Travis is happy. Kurt's happy. Everybody's happy. Everybody's I'm happy. You're on the radio. Okay. Scott, uh, you guys did great. Scott, great job, man. Thank you. Thank you. No, no real uh, controversy no. within the questions. I am bummed though. I thought for sure the three-sided polygon was gonna yeah. throw somebody yeah, off. Cool. You Two guys smart are good. dudes. I think so. Two smart guys thought like I had myself. Thought I had huh? you. <laughs> Get out of here. All right. Uh, your emails after the break. It's uh, and douchebag of the day. So douchebag and emails. It's eight fifty. It is Tuesday. Traffic and weather. Moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Confluence Music Festival with Ludacris, Riley Green, and more, and the NASCAR Cup Series June 1st and 2nd. Tickets are available now at www.raceway.com. Um, ju just to just. Yeah, let me hear it. I'm not. I'm not. This will not. This will not change. This will not change the, the <laughs> oh, outcome man. of the game. Let me hear it. When Moon said, uh, when X Scott asked what country hosted the Olympics, Moon did say. I said Tokyo because it was Tokyo 2020. Okay, but he did not say Japan. You said Beijing. That's enough. But then I said China. Yeah, but well, well Scott didn't correct him, and we moved on. Yeah, so if he had I, asked for the country, I, I do you think I would have got it wrong? Okay, okay, okay. It's all, it's all good. Uh, two lanes are blocked due to a crash 170 southbound at Airport Road. Uh, we also have two lanes blocked due to a crash 270 northbound at 44. Your point forecast, flood potential on some roads and temperatures falling today. Windy and a high of 60. Right now it's 59 at the Point Studio. Uh, Ray Williams, is there a number two show today? Indeed, there is a live number two show at 11 a.m. Central Time. Call 818-532-1420. That's 818-532-1420. Leave me a message today. It's springtime. Love is in the air. Yeah. It's April. We're going to be talking about relationship advice. So if you got a question uh, or concern, right. or uh, just leave me a message about any kind of uh, crazy relationship uh, advice or questions or stories, and uh, we'll get into it today on the number two show. That's 818-532-1420. Call right now. Leave me a message. Go through the Point app. Do the number two show text box. Type me a message via email, or you can call in live at 11 o'clock. I will be there to chat with you. So it's the number two show after the number one show. That's right. Uh, all right. Who do you think, and we'll get to your emails in, in just a second here on the douchebag of the day. Uh, who do you think the biggest germaphobe in this office is? Me. I mean, I would say John Hewlett. Oh, in the whole office? Oh. In the whole Oh, yeah, yeah. Whole, it's you, man. Mm -hmm. In the whole office. John Hewlett, for sure? Yeah. And he's had COVID more than all of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Sweet man. Uh, yeah, listen, I've seen John Hewlett leave the bathroom like, you know, never touching a door handle. Like a surgeon getting ready to go in. Yeah. He actually he taught all of us at Casey one time how to get out of a bathroom without using your hands. Uh, how's that? Your it's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, use your mouth. He taught you too. Uh huh. 
How do you get out of the bathroom without using your hands? Well, do you remember the old jock bathroom at MS down the hall? Yeah. So it was like a one whole place where all of us used it. And Jamie Allman used to go in there with no shoes on. It was a whole thing. And so you man would go in there and he would not, you know, he'd do his business and he'd use his elbow to flush the toilet. He'd use his elbow to turn on the faucet. Uh, faucet. He'd wash his hands. He'd turn off the faucet with his elbow. He would grab the uh, paper towels with the sides of his hands and then uh, do that, take the doorknob with the uh, napkin, and then throw that in the yeah. trash and then got out of there. It was incredible. Yeah, it's yeah. basically what I do without the elbows. Yeah, yeah I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, use my foot on the, uh, the toilet flusher Same. if it's a... Uh, mm -hmm. it well, see, I, I used to do that, and then a friend of mine said, well, there's older people and stuff that can't use their feet, so they'll use their hands, so it's actually making it worse. Sure. For, for them. Hands. Why? For, do, yeah, for them. Why do we have a flush <laughs> no, of hands care about anyway? Them. Like, we should have had a foot pedal this whole time, like a, a kick drum. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Why did they make it that way? Well, now they installed on the doors here uh, the foot... Openers. The foot openers, mm -hmm. where you right. can just push your foot down and pull open the door that way. Right. I always like to go down and... When they're the automatic ones and just scan my eyeball like you're mm. supposed to. Like get right down yeah, there. Yeah, right down it. there. Yeah. Let them know like it's me, I'm done. And that the flushing water, it's, it's refreshing when it sprays my uh, neck area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> Ooh, I'm awake now. It's nice. Yeah. You know, Scott, you're right. Uh, when you do use your foot on the stick, you are now dirtying it up for the next person. Sure. And again. But that's why, and there's care. toilet paper that's right there. Problem. So you just quickly, you get a little thing of toilet paper, you. Flush it and you throw it in while the good water's idea. circling down and you're good to go. You just run away. Whee. Have any of you guys seen the, there was like a podcast with these, and the guy, it was like live on a podcast. He came to the revelation about going to the bathroom. That he's like, you're telling me you guys just poop right into the toilet? And everyone's like, what? Like, <laughs> you just let it, you don't catch it in your hand? Get out of here. And it's everyone's like, and it was real. He's gone his whole life. Pooping in his head. I'm like, are there people out there that don't know the process correctly? Like he was never taught. Because he was like blown away. And he goes, no, nah, I'm saying like you put the tissue in and then you go in your hand and you drop it. Wait, and, the, and the woman's like, I want to leave right now. I'm so <laughs> disgusted and appalled. Is this a joke? And he's like, <laughs> what? This guy was like 100%. And how old was this person? This man was grown, full oh. grown. No way. Maybe in his forties. Like so, he was he was pooping in his hands his whole life. <laughs> so bare hands. I can't like, tell. Put... Bare hands. Putting like tissue in his hand. You're like yeah, that's what the toilet paper's for. Yeah, so the correct way of using your. He animal, took right? that wish in one hand and crap oh, in the other. Oh my! Very God. Serious. Yeah. No way. Good I call. I I choose not to believe this. <laughs> I'm gonna find it and send it. Well. Now that you man is not you know full time here, uh -huh. you know who takes the crown of the biggest germaphobe in in the building? I, I don't listen. I can't speak for the salespeople. Right. Uh, may, maybe you learn. I mean, you clean a lot. I do clean a lot. Um, yeah, and I still use hand sanitizer pretty regularly. And Clor I always have Clorox wipes on me at any given moment. My car, the desk, at home. Sure. Now, according to experts here, where are the germiest spots in the office? Probably the pens, the keyboard. Uh, the number mouse. one is door handles. Door handles. Number do, yeah, usually the germiest spot because everybody touches them. So it's a good idea to get in the habit of using hand sanitizer when you get to your desk uh, and to your car. Uh, then your keyboard. There are over 3,000 microscopic organisms living in every square inch of the average keyboard. Mm -hmm. Then at your desk. Covered with your own germs, plus any you pick up on your hands and arms, you know, don't assume a janitor or cleaning crew is cleaning your desk off. Wipe it down with a disinfectant spray every now and then. Then you got the shared microwave and fridge. Mm -hmm. Again, everyone touches the handles and buttons. You're probably about to eat, so wash your hands first. You know, it's disgusting to think about our, our microphones in here, especially yours, Riz, because oh, everybody's so spit is going all over that damn thing. Oh, yeah. Not just the part where you're talking, but like the entire cord, disgusting. Well, it's really only me, Donnie, and Liv using this. Yeah. I look at them as clean people. They are. But they get sick. I know they get sick. I look at them as clean people. <laughs> <laughs> I know so they get good. sick. I should wipe this oh, down more. Dude. I am hoping maybe they do. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, man. I got to get in the habit of wiping it down more. Just hoping for the best. 
Uh, the water cooler, uh, the spot you touch has germs on it, but grossness can be lurking in the water itself, too. Yeah, dude, because the mouth of the bottles, nobody's ever being diligent enough to not get it on that spout. You know what I'm saying? I'm always diligent. Like I they're putting, like, the mouthpiece up, up, up in there? Up there. Up in there? Ugh. Up in there? <laughs> so gross. You know, a few studies have found that water tanks aren't aren't always cleaned on the regular. Uh, the bathroom again, they're not cleaned as much or as well as you might think. It's one of the it's one reason you really shouldn't be using your phone in the bathroom. Let me ask you this: When you yeah. guys go into the bathroom, yeah, and you're sitting down on the toilet, do you use the little the little wax paper over the toilet, or you just bare the ass gasket? The gasket? Yeah. No, because I only go number two in the bathroom here. Uh huh. When I know I'm the first person to do it. You think that our cleaning crew is wiping down the toilet seats. Yeah. There's been a Band-Aid in the stairwell for two weeks. Yeah. And I'm not, that's not a knock on. I well, do think that. I do think they, and Alma, I, great. I think they clean the toilets. I, I think they do. All right. I don't want to think otherwise. But what time? So they're cleaning them at. I'm here sometimes when Alma gets here to clean our office. It's like at five, six o'clock. Yeah. I night. will only use them when the seats are up. Mm. When the seats are up, okay. I know they've been cleaned. You think you know. <laughs> but do you know there's a night crew here? There's people here at night. They're not putting the seat back up, though. They're not putting the seat back up. The seat's staying down. If the seat's up, that's clean. If the mm -hmm. seat's up, I will only use it because I know it's clean. Mm. Okay. And I want my hairy ass to be the first person on that seat. Oh. What? A no. Mm -mm. What? Yes, go. Okay. <laughs> no, it's a go, little stupid. Go, go. All right. So let's say you go into the bathroom, public stall. You're at work. There's a pubic hair on the toilet seat. What do you do with the pubic hair? Eat you it. blow it off. Do you flick it off? Do you get? I will take what a do you piece. Do? I will take a piece of toilet paper, and I will use that to flick it off. Okay. Do you put it in the bowl or you put it on the ground? I put it on my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I put it on my keychain with the rest of them. All right. No, no further questions. I tie it to my own pube. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make an extension. That's right. Uh, Cube extension. Yeah. It is cool. Uh, I leave to answer that question. You leave the room. You're like, oh, no, he goes home. Dude, if I see something on the toilet seat, like I know if there's something on it, I'm just like, well, this is, I'm leaving. Well, and that's the worst, too, because then you see the pubic hair and then you start going, oh my God, whose pube is this? Right? And it's like a Rolodex of everybody who works here. Or any. And that's, now, a, that's an intrusive thought that I don't want to have. I don't start thinking about who owns this pubic hair. I just know there's a pubic hair. Doesn't have a name tag on it. Or, yeah. Man. And I always think, how do, is it, how do they always look the same? Every time. I went Not always. I, Maybe I, it's the same person. I saw there's one yesterday. No way. What, what are they like? Maybe it's the pubic hair fairy. <laughs> <laughs> he goes around and goes, yink. Yink. he's got like tweezers, just day. puts them down. Yink, 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 gotcha. <laughs> uh, uh, elevator buttons, uh, uh -huh. more touch points. You got a lot of traffic. Think about using your knuckle instead of the tip of your finger. Or buy one of those keychains that let you open doors and hit buttons without touching them. That's the sign of a true germaphobe. If you got one of those keychains, it's like your touch point keychain. Mm. Vending machines, even worse than elevator buttons because they have more nooks and crannies that are hard to clean. And then your phone, all the germs and bacteria you pick up from those other eight spots eventually end up on your phone, too. So. When's the last time you took your case off your phone and cleaned your inside your case? Because I'm here to tell you, it's disgusting under there. Uh, when was the last time I did it? Yeah. Uh, I think with my new phone, I don't think I've ever done it. Oh, I forgot uh, I put my little fortunes from my fortune cookies in my phone. Uh, yeah, mine's not that bad. Mine looks pretty gross. Oh, I found coins Oh, online. I found a pubic hair. Oh, Gross. boy. Who's it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to a couple emails. Uh, Risho, 1057thepoint.com. Emails are brought to you by Kloss Furniture, lowest prices guaranteed. We have something for everybody. Hi, gang. Hey. I love the show. Listen to you guys every morning. I felt compelled to email you after listening to Moon talk about his experience at Bucky's. I know you're all big fans. I'm not a fan. I've never been. Well, I was uh, a fan, too, until visiting one in Springfield recently. I took my reusable water bottle to fill it up, used the bathroom, and bought a few items. When I was checking out, the cashier asked if I'd fill up, filled up my water bottle there. I responded that I had, but just with water, and she charged me for it. Hmm. Apparently, it's considered a cold refill, and they charge just as much for a fountain soda as they do for filling up a water bottle with water. Out of the bathroom? No, I would think it was on the soda machine. Really? 
I was appalled, and I have to make the switch to Wally's, and I have ever since. Shame on Bucky's. Back to you. <laughs> love, love you guys. Shame on Bucky. Shame. 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 First of all, we love Wally's as well, and we yeah. don't have right. Bucky's here. So Wally's has my heart. Yeah, Wally's but has. Bucky's is neat. Well, and also, speaking of gas stations, Mobile on the Run gave us all some um, really it? nice reusable cups right where you here, can dude. fill it up for really? 60 cents. Uh, and I imagine that's all beverages. Oh, yours is in the office. You never gave him his? It's on your I desk. I never saw his. I'm sorry. Scott's? Yes, King Scott's is on no, your I put, desk. I put it on Moon's desk. Oh, well, it's back on your desk okay. yesterday. Is this, is this his? No, that's mine. Oh. Listen, I'm drinking somebody's. And it's, it's in the awesome. floor. <laughs> It's filled with pubes in the bathroom. Right, yeah, nice. it's in the bathroom. All I know is I left coffee in it yesterday, <laughs> it's, it's and it was, our, it was warm this morning. It's our new See pube that? container. <laughs> it's the office pube uh, container. It's the collector. And once it's full, you can refill it with pubes for 60 cents. Oh, you good. got coffee in there? And they all so look the same. Yeah, co 60 cent coffee? It, it sounds like it's all beverages. I have a mobile on the run near me. Yeah, dude. I filled mine up with donuts. Oh, nice. Got them on a technicality. Anything nice. You can put in there. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I just jammed a whole bunch of I'm going to do the, uh, the cheese you put on the hot dogs. Okay. Nacho <laughs> cheese. Got them. Uh, next. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi. Love the show. I have a question I've been wondering about for many years, and I figured I'd finally ask. I've been listening God. for about six years, but not since the beginning. So I think I may have missed this. Is there a reason behind all the random noises like creaking, soda glugging, glass shattering, and trampoline <laughs> sounds at the beginning of the show? Obviously a podcast Oh, it's a listener. podcast. Or are they just attention-getting noises? Thanks, Katie from Wentzville. Well, Katie, I have the answer. Uh, we had, um, I had built a couple different intros for us over the, over the last couple of years. And when, when Scott and I were kind of putting this one together, I believe it was just, maybe just when we got over here uh, to, to Hubbard. From, yeah, right from around us. then. So we built a new one, kind of redoing the imaging, and we had like an entire huge bank of sound effects. And uh, we were kind of like picking and choosing, you know, what, what, what we should use. And they were all so good. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of made a really fun, nice little <laughs> cadence out of all of it. And like, this is all random fun. Let's just kind of put it all so basically, together. basically, when you hear it, you know the Rachel podcast is going to start. Yeah. Yeah. Which you is hear why, the random sounds. Yeah, which is why we haven't really changed it. So, yeah, we Scott and I built that um, out of uh, just like a whole bank of, of different things. And we intentionally kind of put a little bit of a cadence together. So once you kind of got used to it, you kind of heard it in your mind. Yeah, maybe a half familiar... a second. Yeah, before you... Before you before it ha happened, I uh, you know I almost equated to uh, when you hear. The, I think this is it. When you hear, when you hear that, when you hear that sound, you yeah. know Kirby enthusiasm is coming up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted something like that, and and kudos to everybody here, uh, including Riz. Like um, we never even got anything approved or nothing. Like, we we just do what we, we just want. Do it. We yeah. just do what we want. Leave us alone. Nobody's nobody's on us and like, oh yes, you have to do it this way. A lot of places are like super strict about all that. And here, Scott and I just do what we want with the podcast. It was kind of our our it's project, awesome. our baby, and uh, and that's what we decided to go with. So good question. All right, next. Good morning, Riz Show. My name is Tom. My daughter, who's nine, we're going to our first real show in late April at the pageant. We have GA tickets. I'm asking you fine folks because you have so much experience at these kind of shows. If I want to be up at front, uh, at the front of this show, when is the best time to arrive and wait in line prior to doors opening? I'm hoping to make it a special night, and I'm looking for advice from the experts. What show? Love the show. Um, Sierra Farrell. Sierra. Sierra Farrell. Somebody look that up. Who, who's that? Uh, She's great. What is it? Country pop? Metal? Heavy well, yeah, what kind of What metal. kind of music? Uh, I guess technically it would be like pop. American singer, songwriter, musician from West Virginia. Hmm. Uh, elements uh, of country, it. gypsy, jazz, bluegrass, folk, and Latin. Yeah, the picture I'm seeing, she's wearing a cowboy hat. Uh, so I'm assuming that it's not going to be a violent rush to the front of the stage once so. the doors open. Well, the other thing is, um, yeah, what kind of crowd and is it sold out? If it's sold out. Maybe get there a little bit earlier than you think because the front of the stage at pageant was what twenty five foot wide, maybe maybe a little bit more. So it's, you got a good big front upstage mm -hmm. um, sort of uh, width there. And you with a nine year old? With a nine year old, uh, I would say if doors are at seven, get there at six thirty, right? Yeah, maybe All a little. Right. Yeah, I, I would say nobody's. I don't know who that is, so it's not like a well known. 
artist? I mean, sometimes people line up hours before to get to be the first ones in the door. Like El Monstero. So, oh, sold out. Oh, it is sold out. All right, sold out bad. pretty quickly. She does have a good fan base. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'd get there a little. I'd get there an hour early, get Ooh, in yeah. line, let her have early. that first experience of waiting in line to get in the, the show. Because that's kind of cool. And then, then you're there plenty early. Hey, and you know what you got to do? Because you, you would a nine-year-old. You got to go. You go into the bathroom before. Right. Because once these doors open, we can't stand to get a t-shirt. No. And I no we're get, listen. We're on a mission. We're getting to the front. Sold out well in advance. Is there an opener? Probably, right? Okay, so shows at 8. That means doors are probably at 7. If it's going to be a long day. I say get there at 6. It'll be a long night. Oh, you think so? Six, 5.30, Get there at get 6 to be safe. If you want to get it right up front, get there early. You do got to calculate all this stuff. And think about this. It's 2,000 cap capacity. Pageant's been there for 20-plus years, so they're pretty good at getting everybody in pretty quickly. Man, I'd say you're safe. Well, let, let's let's say 6.15 is safe, but maybe maybe sooner. Maybe sooner. But again, you got to tell this little girl that you're with. You, you got to go standing. to the bathroom before... We're not going to get in. You go. I need to go to the bathroom. She's I hate well, let going me look to the concert. Merch. It's going to suck. <laughs> it's going to suck. Why don't you let her? I, don't let, don't take the nine year old. Hey, there's mini what? golf. <laughs> Listen, there's mini golf right right across the way. So maybe like you say, hey, we're going to get down there at five fifteen. We'll do a little mini golf. We'll be in line by six fifteen. That way you can listen. Keep your eye on the line. You can keep your eye on the line. Nudo house right next door. Keep your eye on the line. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Good luck. All right. This this person. Uh, today's douchebag of the day. This is a parent from Baltimore who embezzled twenty nine thousand dollars from a school fundraiser, Oops. using the money to uh, bent on things on DraftKings and FanDuel. Whoa. Oh. They're going to say save the rec center. No. Nope. <clears throat> so okay. James Michael Harris, uh, the former treasurer of the Parent Teacher Student Association at Stemmers Run Middle School, entered a guilty plea for theft. The police had initially issued a warrant for his arrest uh, back in July. According to court documents, Harris began stealing funds from the account as early as April of 2022. Now, a school staff member and a parent confronted James after growing suspicions, leading him to confess to the theft. Again, he stole twenty nine grand. Mm. He admitted to spending thousands of dollars on personal expenses and the remainder on gambling with FanDuel and DraftKings. Because of James, student athletes no longer have snacks available after school. Oh. Dances have been canceled. Gifts for staff during Teacher Appreciation Week have ceased. And parent volunteers have resigned from the PTSA. Whoa. Uh, moreover, the PTSA has encountered difficulties in settling the $6,815 debt owed to a chocolate company, the provider of snacks for the school. Uh, James has agreed to a plea deal to, uh, and a deferred sentence for six months to facilitate his payment of restitution. So basically, he's got he's to pay the money back. I know a great way to... Uh, earn that very quickly. <laughs> Selling chocolates. That's good work. Uh, however, he still faces a potential sentence of up to 10 years in prison if he doesn't get the funds back. But so this guy stole 29 grand from school to use on DraftKings oh. and FanDuel. What a jerk. What a jerk. And now the, now the athletes don't have snacks. That's the thing guys. I'm the most mad about. Everybody loves snacks. Not everybody, everybody loves, loves the dance. Snacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the dance could go to hell. Right. Got a word for that. Douchebag. This guy's a douchebag of the day. So let's uh, let's do a little sentence for this guy. Uh, Moon, first you know, weapon. I say let's just start off with the whip. Oh, you can use the douche whip. I think the douche whip. All right, Rafe, I'm going to give you a crack at this. Oh. So you have the attack dogs, the beatdown, the bunker buster, the cannon, the Gatlin gun, the grenade, the gun, the laser, the saw, the tank, the taser, a drive-by douching or the pump action douche weapon. Well, in honor of... Blaine from Predator. I will take the Gatlin gun. Okay. Uh, Gatlin gun. <laughs> Learn, you want to finish him off? Yep, uh, I will take a drive-by douche. For oh, the drive-by douching. Wow. Moon is the car gassed up. The car has been gassed up forever. We haven't used this in a we while. We haven't used this in a while. All right, everybody hop in. All right. <laughs> Thank you. See, that is ass. Got so exciting. I called shotgun, but got him. <laughs> All right, thank you.
Good news for him, though, is he bet the he bet the over on the drive by news, and he just made all his money back. Snacks for everyone. <laughs> On Crustables, on today, uh, today being National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day. All right, 922, quick sports report. I got some news stories for you real quick. Final break of the morning, moon coming at you. Traffic is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway, the Confluence Music Festival with Ludacris, Riley Green, and more, and the NASCAR Cup Series June 1st and 2nd. Tickets available now at www.raceway.com. Two lanes blocked due to a crash, 270 northbound at 44. We also have two lanes blocked due to a crash 64 westbound after Concourse Drive. A point forecast flood potential on some roads and temperatures falling today. It's windy and a high of 60. Right now it's 60 at the Point Studio. All right, King Scott's official bucket list. Now for those of you that haven't been listening, we have compiled a list. We've talked about it several times. And we have a new competition coming up with punishments. I know everybody's been clamoring for that. That's right. coming. We're going to announce Riz that in a week or so. The Riz Olympics. The Riz Olympics. There's going to be a set of events, and the loser is going to have hell to pay. But on the flip side of that coin, because we do love each other, and we do believe it or not, behind the scenes, there's a lot of positivity on this show. Uh, we're going to. The flip coin is we got a lot of stuff we can help each other accomplish too. Yeah, yeah. let's lift help each other, other up, achieve guys. our dreams. Let's Come lift, on. Let's lift each Come other on, up yeah. and then Woo. break each other down. Yes, that is how. <laughs> That's the Riz Show way. That's the dynamic we're looking for. So we went over some of Riz's bucket list items which and some of Moon's bucket list items. And people have emailed in. There's sponsors emailing in. There are fans emailing in. They're going to help us achieve our dreams. So it's become a community effort. So let's see if we can get King Scott uh, some help in some of his. Number one on King To bring your home into the future, upgrade to a smart home with Hoppin' Brothers Electrical Services. Control your lights and thermostat and security from your phone and save energy with smart technology. Plus, the current specials, it's easier than ever. Hoppin' Brothers is making your home smarter, safer, and more efficient. And of course, you could brighten up your home with Hoppin' Brothers lighting upgrades. Whether you're looking for energy-efficient LED lighting or a new fixture to enhance your space, Hoppin' Brothers, they have you covered. For a limited time, get 5% off lighting upgrades. Don't miss out on this bright opportunity. Visit HoppinBrothers.com today and start saving. That's Hoppin' Bros, actually. H-O-F-F-M-A-N-N-Bros.com and start saving with Hoppin' Brothers. And ask about their home protection services. Discounts, uh, discounts across all their home service lines. And uh, two semi-annual visits for your HVAC system. Great for that peace of mind. Hoppin' Brothers is an independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. Hoffmanbros.com. Too well. Let's get to Moon's uh, list of things. Moon's he would like to bucket achieve list. There's some cool ones on here, man. There's a couple cool ones. Let's, so let's start with number one. Moon wants to drive a monster truck, which oh, is man. rad it's as hell. And yeah. I also want. I at least want to ride shotgun. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. Growing up in St. Louis, big, big Bigfoot fan, as everyone should be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, man, we've gone to this Monster Jam. You know, Monster Jam always invites mm -hmm. me out and has had me out for years and years and uh, take the kids. And it's just been the most fun experience every single time it comes through. We do a whole family event with it. And every time, it's, you know, Scott and I have done this, where we get down on the, on the, uh, on the track, on the dirt beforehand for the pre-show. And when you're next to one, how can you not... Be driven to want to drive it. Yeah. You, somebody you who's sit there and you go, like, I am compelled. Yeah. You have? I Oh, yeah. I drove the tailgater. Dang. Uh, a couple years ago. Did not know that. Uh, it's There's no second seat. It's only one seat, so you can't ride shotgun. Dang. That's fine. Man. That's better. Uh, it but I want to go. Probably, and I have pictures, uh, probably one of the coolest things I've done. I got to drive it over at the other uh, race. Men of my life, how are your bones feeling? Your muscles, your brain, everything. I want your health to be tip-top because you got a lot of life ahead of you. And Victory Men's Health are there for you. Uh, if you have things that maybe feel off, maybe you've never done anything like Victory Men's Health before. You know, you've, um, you know, you go to the doctor every so often maybe it's been a couple years go to victory men's health get that micronutrient testing done where they're going to take some blood from you they're going to put you on this scale that's going to measure your bmi tell you exactly how much bone mass you have maybe some things going on um, underneath the skin that you just can't tell that's happening victory men's health can get you the answers on maybe some hormone issues or your uh, testosterone is low or let's say some weight has uh, either you've lost some weight or you've gained some weight and you're thinking, okay, I don't know what's going on here. They 
can help regulate your body into a place that will keep you going at your most optimal. And that's what I wish for you. Uh, you can sign up online or stop by any of the four locations. O'Fallon, Missouri, O'Fallon, Illinois, Town & Country, that new location in Sunset Hills. Get more info, all right, guys? VictoryMensHealth.com. Backstage. I don't realize how far behind we were. I mean, like... We're having too much of a good time. We did a lot of show today yeah. and didn't play a lot of commercials. Uh, and that's... Uh, <laughs> Problematic for some. You know what, guys? It's all my fault. I, I'm so sorry that I took so long. And with that damn matchup in the moon 45 thing. 45 seconds more than he did. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I've well, pushed us be. well behind. <laughs> you should all be ashamed and of I've, yourselves. And I've ruined it all. Especially yeah, you over shame. there. I'm yeah. sorry. All right. Real quick sports report. Moon, what do you got? Sports, brought to you by DraftKings, a casino queen. Call the book, your bracket bash, watch parties at DraftKings Sportbook now. Hey, the Blues won in overtime 3-2. to two. I'm Moon, and that's your sports, because doing the bull dance, feeling the flow, working it, working it. Good oh. enough. That was nice. All right, guys, let's uh, wrap it up. Appreciate okay. you all listening. Today's wrap-up sponsored by... Sponsored by Jack in the Box, Jack Wraps. A little bit of healthy, a little bit of indulgence only at Jack. All right, what is today's podcast title? Oh, you know, it was The Clogger Leaves No Streaks. Because the clogger leaves no streaks. Yeah, the clogger leaves no streaks. Yeah, we That's had, a, right. had a heck of an opening today. We went yeah. many directions. Oh, sure did. All right, <laughs> uh, what do you got going on? Uh, can you feel the punk tonight, man? I've never been more excited to, uh, to do Disney stuff. This is full-on Disney classics, and we are punking the heck out of all of them. It's a family show, but it is, uh, I mean, perfect for everybody. It's at the pageant this year, May 11th, 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Get your tickets now. Learn. Just follow me on the socials if you like entertaining crap. At Learn versus Radio. Rafe. Follow me at I am Rafe Williams. I'll be going live soon on Instagram on the Rizzuto channels to get you guys pumped for this 11 a.m. number two show. Call in. Hang out with me. Are we going live on the Points YouTube at 11 a.m.? All right. Live number two show at 11 a.m. Uh, Scott. I am King Scott Rules on all socials, and uh, follow me there, especially Venmo. Just a dollar to follow. It's pretty awesome. All right. We leave you with a selection from our team. Remember the day brought to you by Hot Shot, St. Louis home for blues hockey from O'Fallon, Missouri. Scott Silverberg hey, Scott. is our team today. And Scott wants to hear the song. Here it is. Enjoy it. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Okay. Hey, it's Dan Soder. You're listening to The Rizzuto Show.